there was a word given at the opening of the heavens conference, and the Lord said, you're, con you're too concerned about the extremities of the nation. He said the battle is going to be won in the middle. In Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, Kentucky, Nebraska, Iowa. We're not hoping for victory. We're expecting victory, and it's coming in Jesus' name. Amen. God prophesied, Pastor Gene, before this year, he said, listen to a sound that will come, and it will come from the heavens. And he said, they will say, what is this sound? What is this sound? And this is in 2022 at our conference, September 2022, about 2023. He said, there will be a sound, and they'll say, what is this sound? What is this sound? And the Spirit of God said, it will be that which will be known as a sound that shall come, that shall carry freedom. And 2023 shall be known as a sound and a freedom that shall arise, and it shall come for the children, says the living God. This was before there was any mention of the movie, A Sound of Freedom. We have to start paying attention to what, to what the Spirit of God is saying. Even now, the Spirit of God says, I bring you to a moment when Joseph, he tested his brothers. And his brothers, they spoke lies that caused him to be indicted. Cause him to be falsely accused and cause him to go to prison. And there was one Potiphar, Potiphar's wife, that spoke great accusations against one Joseph. That caused him to be indicted and was part of the reason that prison awaited one who was innocent. And yet I speak this at this time when many are looking and they're saying, what is happening in the earth? What is happening with these indictments? What is happening with these accusations against even 145? Is this true? Is these things correct? And God says, listen to me. Did the lies of Joseph's brothers, did the lies of Potiphar's wife ultimately prevail? No. God said, I raised up Joseph again to be a voice to bring forth my purpose, my agenda to a nation, my people. And so God says, I have placed my hand upon this man, 45. And even though the indictments have come, even though they have accused, and even though there have been lies, God says, I remind you what Joseph said to his brothers. And this is what I'm doing in this nation at this time concerning 45, concerning your house and concerning your government. He looked unto his brethren and he said, listen to me, what you meant for evil. God meant it for good that you would be saved and many people. And God says, look at the bigger picture now. The reason there has been the injustice, the reason there has been that which I've allowed to be lying spirits and a veil of deception is to show you the goodness of God that shall pass across this earth and my justice shall be seen. And I say to those who are in fear, why do you fear when I have spoken and I say, said to you that I would pass by this nation and my goodness would prevail for the sake of the children and for a generation that exists now and a generation that will come but listen to me carefully my word is declared that I would restore the years that the locust has stolen and they have stolen much they have afflicted your children they have come out the youth but God said as Joseph stood and spoke to his brethren I speak to you now do you understand that even though the youth even though the children they have looked and said we shall change their identity yet there is a movement that shall arise among the children and even among the youth and they will say we are born again and our identity is in Christ and God says this movement shall spill out over into the schools into the cafeterias into the universities it shall carry over into the sporting events and the youth will lead a movement that shall cause the mothers to arise to their defense and the fathers that shall come and say we must come man woman husband wife with our children and we must stand in the
this land again. And God says what they have thought that they would do unto the women to disgrace them, to change even their identity. There has been this enmity that has happened even in the days when I said there would be war between the woman and thy seed of the enemy. And God says, listen to me, I will raise up as there was in the day when the woman came with an alabaster box and there was an anointing that was contained, but yet the anointing was broken and it was spilled out. Look, I shall raise up and I will throw it in the face of the enemy, a woman that shall be appointed, anointed of me, says the living God. And you think that you have a vice president. Do not make me laugh, for I will show that there has been an angel of light. I will show that there has been a counterfeit in your house called white, and I will bring forth truth, for my spirit is the greatest entity of truth that exists in the earth, and my truth will stand, and this nation shall march to that truth as I reestablish what a president looks like, and I will bring forth a woman that will arise who will carry this anointing that will spill out across this country, that will bring the balm of healing, healing to the generation of those who have been mutilated, maligned, and that which has been brought, bringing confusion at this time. And I will set it in order as I bring the truth. Watch a man, a woman, and another man, and watch his family shall come, and they will gather by the millions, and they will say, we are taking our country back. And I will honor that, and there will be a great shift that will take place. But in the meantime, do not be fooled. For there will be that which where they will say, look at this death. What does this death mean? What does it mean now? And it will cause a frenzy. It will cause a fear. And it will cause a stirring. But God says, do not be moved by that which they would want you to believe. For it is to manipulate, re-manipulate, and to shake and reshape the future of your country. But God says, even though this shall take place, it will not have an effect. For I will cause my light to shine even brighter as I cause there to be one who shall speak for me in your house. And there will be a justice that will come that will cause things that have been swept under the table, laptops that have been closed, emails that seemed as though they have been forgotten. God says, do you think that my finger is not on the these things for it has been it shall be and there is those things in the hands of the right people and it will come forth and it will be an hour of the day of deeds and it will be known as the day of reckoning and I will vindicate those who have stood as my remnant and prayed and I will bring judgment to the wicked and I will vindicate and honor the righteous says the living God in this time I feel there's a shift that I'm sensing in this atmosphere. Okay. And it happened when the Lord was speaking and, and what uh, Jesse was sharing. And, and I feel it's this. There is a new song that is going to begin to be sung in the swing states. And you know what the song is going to be? Some of these swing states are going to start singing the blues because they're going to start seeing red and turning red. And, and they're going to start turning red in indignation because they can't believe that their, their state shifted towards conservatism. There is a real shift coming to the swing states. And I, and I tell you, this is going to happen. And, and this is very strategic. The scripture that I hear, and I looked it up in my Bible, is Daniel 9.21. It says, I, Daniel, while I was praying, the angel Gabriel was caused to fly swiftly. And I sense angelic presence in here even when jesse was speaking and i walked out on this stage tonight and this church has got words of life that are in this atmosphere that have been pioneering many many things for years for the united states of america and i believe that we would grieve the holy spirit and not use wisdom if we don't in this spirit of agreement and those of you that are watching take the words that are here take the things that we are facing and with the angels that are here waiting for our words, we need to come into agreement. And I think we need to take a moment to pray and really release decrees, prayers that are going to shift this country towards where it needs to go and towards the way of uh, acceleration for God's justice. 
and I don't feel like I'm supposed to do that, but I, I Dutch, Dutch do you feel it? I, I, I just sense that that's what we need to do. Go ahead, Dutch. We have a moment to pray, and then even those that need to get their hearts to the Lord, I think that would also be honorable. Go ahead, Dutch. Just Father. stand. Let's stay. Father, you have been very clear tonight that you want us to do 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 4, 5. You said, remember, your weapons are not fleshly, carnal, human. They are mighty through me. Filled with my power is what the word means. Filled with dunamis. They are infused with dunamis, these weapons. And you said with them, Lord, we can tear down, demolish strongholds. And everything that can be built in the mind of a person or a culture that shuts me out. You said we have weapons powerful enough to demolish that. And so we pray into that right now, Lord. We release your power from this place and from around the nation and nations, those agreeing with us now. We release your power, the name of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb the sword of the spirit yes, through the power of agreement yes, we decree that there is a force yes. now hovering over america yes. invading the atmosphere yes. of america that is demolishing these thought patterns and lies and what has taken decades for the enemy to build through uh, uh, deception and deceit and the education and the programming you are going to dismantle that yes, stronghold yes, we tear it down yes, in the Lord. name of jesus yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. we say mindset of humanism yes. mindset of evil that would traffic children that would cause to divide us and and create racism yes. and uh traffic in children and these demonic mindsets and lust for power we demolish you we tear them down in the name of jesus we say that the name of jesus is against you the power of the cross is against you it is finished it is accomplished and we speak his name and lord now we appeal to you just as our founders did we appeal based on the blood of the lamb sprinkled on the mercy seat of heaven we ask you for mercy over this land. We ask you for mercy over those bound. We ask you for mercy for those that have been sold lies and now believe them. We say your power can demolish it in a moment. You can do it. Yes, we will teach them truth and renew their minds. We will do that. But you will come with a spirit of repentance. Repentance meaning a new understanding, a new way of thinking. You are coming with an unveiling, not just of the one, but of a nation. Spirit of enlightenment, spirit of revelation. You are coming to unveil, to lift the veil. You are coming with a great revival that will save us. And we will preach this Jesus. So, Lord, we agree now here and around this nation and the nations. And we say, yes, America shall be saved. And the strongholds are coming down. And the gospel will prevail in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, the verse that balances out and makes sense out of When you hear prophecy like Hank is saying tonight, my heart goes back to, I remember when uh, Donald Trump ran in 2016. It's just a few of us were talking about this idea that God was about to intervene in American affairs through a God that they weren't expecting him to use. And the Lord gave me a word before the, uh, actually it's a sober word. It was Chuck Pierce gave it, and most people don't even realize how accurate a prophet he, he can be. He said that unless there is a shift in America by midterms, Within four years, you'll see the undoing of everything Donald Trump has done. It was an unusual prophecy, and I actually called to get a clarification. I said, did you actually say what I think you said in one short sentence? That if there wasn't a shift in America, that the midterms results, this is going to be in like 2018, would be such that within four years, which put us in 2020, everything that was accomplished will be undone. 
Well, he prophesied it would all be undone. And I just watched when Biden came in, everything was undone. And the word the Lord gave me in 2016 about us is God will give us deliverance. God will give us the strategies. But we have to actually meet God in our agency. And not expect it because it's been said, preached, prophesied, or proposition that it's going to manifest. And here's what I got in 2016. The Lord said, this will be the challenge for your generation. Elisha became sick with the illness with which he would die. And King Joash of Israel came to him and wept over his face and said, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen. He knew, it. He knew the anointing of the double portion. The prophet of God was about to leave. And Elisha said to him, I know what you need. You need something from me. Take a bow and some arrows. So he took himself a bow and some arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, put your hand on the bow. So he put his hands on it. Elijah put his hands on the king's hands. Now you've got the anointing and you've got human agency. You've got the obedience of a person in an office of a king. And you have the prophetic resting on it with all the potential of changing the situation. And he said, now open the east window. And he opened it, and then Elijah said, shoot. And he shot. And he said, that's the arrow of the Lord's deliverance, the arrow of deliverance from Syria. You must strike the Syrians at Aphek till you've destroyed them. You cannot go halfway. You have to go all the way for this victory. That's right. You can't go in part. You can't think, well, I just want to get by this one time. I just want to get past this. And he took the arrows, and he said, take the arrows, and he took them. Then the prophet said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. So he struck, boom, 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 three times. And the man of God was angry. And he said, you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck Syria till you destroyed it. Here's my burden. We have got to get to an, a, a dimension of unity in the body of Christ where we pierce through this kind of discord and fragmentation of exertion and come to that critical point of critical mass where we smite the arrows five or six. There is still a warfare over the unity of the body of Christ. What we're doing should not be that novel. The fact that, and then even when I, I hear Gene saying, do you, it's almost like a pleading, do you see the value in this? It ought to be obvious. This thing isn't sewed up. It's I feel all the time, and when I'm around the prophets, I try to be optimistic, but I'm Jewish enough to be pessimistic. <laughs> and here's what I, I remind myself of Patton's great line in that movie, when they're at Bastogne, and he reminds Eisenhower, he says, we could still lose this. There's victory in the atmosphere, but it's not a done deal. That's right. I'm telling you, there's a victory over America, but it's not sealed. There have been too many authoritative, divisive voices, even speaking to the body of Christ, causing us to question whether or not the United States is actually the inheritance of Jesus. You have no idea how goofy some apostolic and prophetic networks are that are questioning whether the United States is even a nation that was given to Jesus and founded by God for a unique purpose of God, causing a doubt, even for guys like me when I'm in front of them, wondering, is, is Jesus the Lord of nations or isn't he? Are nations to be given to him as his inheritance, or aren't they? And part of our problem is we have such a focus on rapturitis, we're so anxious to get out, we're out of here, that we don't realize you're not out till the job's done. You're not out till the job's done. So I was in Israel speaking like a hundred nations. Go to the Feast of Tabernacles. I'm down there. I'm part Jew. So I'm down there talking to my people. Got meeting with Knesset. Have a hundred different nations there. And when I was there, Jesse was there. I had to go to Israel to get hope for America. Because here's what the Lord said to me. He said he wants to give us four more years, but it will be troubled times because the left will freak out. You think now that they've got the power consolidated that they've got, they virtually threaded their way through every institution, academic, corporate, political, media, arts, entertainment. There's not a single mountain that they do not occupy right now. And we're, we're like the hobbits out here trying to take the ring to mortar and, get, and, and break the system. Understand, we are not in a position of power. But that's okay. God likes to take, shall we say, the weak things to confound the mighty. We're going to have to actually move with a, lot, with a whole different degree of 
bang on that ground five or six. We have to have a greater unity, a greater intentionality. 3,143 counties in America, 30 are going to determine the future of this country. You ought to know what those 30 are, and we ought to have intercessors. We ought to have evangelists. We should be pounding those 30 counties day and night because victory is possible, and it's not a done deal. When I was in Israel, the Lord told me this. I'll give you four more years. I had to get it from, I got it, got it in Israel. The Lord said, for the sake of the nations. Because America is still the one restraining force in the global world of anarchy and agendas. We hold China from its agenda. We hold Islam still in check as long as Trump's been around. He put a check on that spirit. You haven't heard about terrorism and ISIS. You haven't been afraid of what a radical Muslim might do. You haven't had that fear because he was so hit back when, when Donald Trump like a modern-day Cyrus, undid the ability of his adversaries to hurt us. The Lord said he'd give us four more years. The issue is still hanging in the balance. He'll give us, it's his will to give it to us. But he still told me, you better run through those nations when I give it to you, because I'm going to restrain lawlessness globally for the sake of one great mighty revival and one great harvest. You better run furiously. So I'm telling you, I believe God wants to give us four years. I think Trump, they want to lock him up. You ought to be praying for him. We are so insensitive and disconnected from what that man is going through. He got hurt in New York. They're, they hit him with $250 million as a baseline. He could go up to $600 million. They're gutting him financially. They're destroying Eric and Donnie's future business enterprises. Family business for the whole family is being torn down. They'd love to tear down the brand and the buildings of Trump. They're sending a message to anyone else that dares to enter into the boys club in Washington. You better not send someone in here again. We'll raise up our own. Well, Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that the body of Christ is here at this moment in history. That's right. That we are here to move in a unique unity that will hit the arrows on the ground five, six, seven times. We're not asking for a temporary relief or a momentary deliverance. We're praying for a divine shift in the atmosphere. I pray that now a greater unity will come into the body of Christ in the area of civic engagement than ever before. And those voices that would intimidate and embarrass us with Christian nationalism and dominionism shall be crushed and made silent. I pray, Lord, that in all those 20 or 30 counties that are decisive in America, that you're going to raise up your ecclesia. You will build your church. And you will build a mighty apostolic end-time harvest machine that will go through the earth. I pray and thank you, Father, that you're revealing these things to your servants right now, that we might be in agreement with you for their manifestation. And everyone said? Amen. 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 Heard the Lord say, I assigned angels as border patrol of the Garden of Eden. I put a flaming sword around the Garden of Eden. Tonight we release and dispatch an angelic host to the southern border of the United States and yea, the northern border of the United States. And what has not been done by the legislation of man, we legislate it by the flaming fire word of God. And we say there will be an angelic border patrol. We say terrorists will not enter our nations. They will be intercepted by the angels of the Lord. We decree and declare tonight that our borders are protected by the word of the living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the name of Jesus. Of history, there are moments where God moved in powerful ways among his people. Azusa Street, Toronto, and Pensacola, forever connected by one word, revival. In 2023, we once again find our country at a crossroads, a tipping point, a realization that something has to change in our nation. With the constant barrage of woke messaging coupled with deep divisions outside and inside the church, this has left many wondering what our response should be to the cultural rot threatening to shake America at its very core. But the embers of revival are beginning to glow once again. And tonight, we come together to offer our response in one voice, unwavering, America shall be saved. We are unified in purpose, unified in spirit, fully awakened to the role that we as the body of Christ must fulfill. The tide is turning. 
We are making a difference. We are winning, but our work has just begun. Revival is here, and it's now time for action. Welcome to Flashpoint Live. seated. Wow. We're glad to be here. It took us a long time. All right. On the count of three, I want to hear what state you're from. One, two, three. All I heard was Wisconsin. Okay. okay. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. It's okay. Wow. All right. Well, Thank you for being a part of Flashpoint Live and to all those watching across television around the world. Welcome to you as well. I'd like to start every Flashpoint Live, especially as we honor the veterans. So if you're a veteran, would you please stand? Thank you. Give them a hand. Come on, you can do better than that. You can do better. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. Listen, there's one thing in America that we must not let die is respect for our veterans and our military. We cannot do that. And, you know, we had a little situation in Afghanistan, and I'm telling you, Americans are rising up, and I vowed that this, this is America where we never leave anyone behind. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Such a good, such a good thing. All right, so I, I would like to acknowledge any law enforcement in the room. Any law enforcement in the room, please stand. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Uh, is you know I, one thing that we really like to acknowledge is the sheriffs. Uh, we reached out to the Sheriff's Department. They, I don't believe they could be here. If there's anybody from the Sheriff's Department, uh, please stand if you're here. We want to acknowledge you. Right back there. Thank you. Thank you. And you say, well, Gene, why do you acknowledge the Sheriff's Department? Because the Sheriff is the one person elected in law enforcement that is there to represent you. That's what his job is. So when... So when you're voting and there's a problem with your ballot, call the sheriff. Just, a, just, a, just if that ever happened. <laughs> and now, uh, you know, doing Flashpoint takes a lot of people. Thank you to all our team. But I want to recognize all those volunteers uh, here and the church staff uh, at Living Word Christian Center. Would you please stand so we can acknowledge you this, uh, this evening? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Now, uh, before I, I, I get Pastor Mac and Lynn to come up, I want, uh, if you are a pastor of a church, would you please stand? Yeah, there they are. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for what you're doing. Now I'd like to call uh, Mac and Lynn Hammond up, uh, pastors of Living Word Christian Center, come up. And listen, before we get things started, it's important, those of you that understand spiritual things, you don't go into somebody's house without getting the blessing of the master of the house. So before we go any further, I've asked Pastor 
Mac and Lynn to pray over what we're doing for the next two days. You agree with that? Yes. Amen. Pastor Mac. Well, I guess uh, just before we begin praying, let me say very loudly, very clearly, this is not a political rally. This is a church meeting where the Holy Ghost and the anointing can make all of the difference in the world. Amen. But what we will be doing is we will be spiritually evaluating the political dynamics that are corrupting this nation. Amen. And learning about some things that we can proactively do to put this nation back in the hands of God. Amen. Why don't you stand for a moment? I've asked my wife to lead us in prayer, and we're going to take a moment and take this to the Lord. Just lift your hands to him if you are a Christian, you're a believer here, then acknowledge his lordship in your life. Lynn, would you lead us in prayer? Father, we just thank you right now and praise you for your mercy, for your goodness toward us, for your wisdom in its innumerable aspects, and that you make known to the angelic rulers the authority that's been given in the name of Jesus. So in the name of Jesus, we enforce your defeat, Satan. We bind even your very cause. We say every plot, every evil conspiracy comes to nothing. Powers of darkness, you stop now. Demon cohorts sent to destroy this nation. We resist you in the name of Jesus. And you desist in your maneuvers. We pray for revival, for reset, for rebuilding, the great awakening to come and to come now. Great power to the church and the church would rise. Let righteousness, Father, prevail. The authority of the righteous expand and grow that America finish her course and that she would receive her inheritance in the eternal ages. And we ask you, Lord, to remove those who give you no place, who stubbornly oppose your plan, scheming, lying, deceitful men and women who will not promote your agenda. We divest of power every evil way, and we remember our covenant of peace and tranquility and that our nation shall be saved. Amen. Let your word, Lord, come forth with power and anointing this very night and penetrate every soul in this building and all of the airwaves in Jesus' name, back to all by the precious blood of the Lamb, Jesus. Amen. 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 You can be seated. Uh, I want to bring out Jesse Duplantis and Kathy. Would you come up? Would you please welcome Jesse Duplantis, Kathy. Paging Jesse Duplantis. Well, it's nice that you're here, Kathy. Thank you. Yeah. There he is. Give him a hand. Thank you. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. So it's uh, rare. This is the first. Can you yes, squat sir? down a little bit. It makes me look a little short. Thank you. Yes. All right. We need prayer for your legs, please. <laughs> so. so whether you guys know this or not, I have to be on my best behavior tonight because I have board members with us tonight. So, you know, I, I just want to say thank you for being a part of the board of Kenneth Copeland Ministries and all that we do with the Victory Channel. You're all so heavily involved. But I would like for the people here to hear from you about what does it mean to see something like Flashpoint and the Victory Channel. Now, I know this is coming fresh for you. Yes, um, but what does that mean when, uh, for Flashpoint to be out doing what we're doing? Well, it's very vitally important because we have a nation to touch. Now, I know there's some people here that may not be church people. You may be Flashpoint Army. And, but, but you're going to be church people. <laughs> it's going to happen. That's right. And uh, what's happening is you've got to have someone stand up for what's right. And what, and what I love about Flashpoint, it's stay, standing up for what's right. That's, and you, the reason why I know it's right, because of persecution. 
Yes, See, sir. You know, and a lot of people don't understand something. They don't know the difference between the persecution of the church and the wrath of God. See, everybody think that they, no one has ever seen the wrath of God other than Noah. Mm -hmm. And that was over with by the time yeah, God finished. Now, we've had the persecution of the church, see? Right. And people are doing that. But all we want to do is reach people and change lives one soul at a time. And I love America. I do. I, but this is not the America I was raised up in. That's right. It's not. And I'm not anti-anybody. I'm anti-devil. See what I'm saying? Because I don't care the worst person in the world. All they got to do is meet Jesus. I'm not talking about religion. You got to go from religion to relationship to fellowship. And when you understand that, that God's work. Vitally important. Flashpoint, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna have to say what I say to you all the time. This is great what we're doing But if you want to change something you got to get in the streets. That's right. Amen. Well, I lost the fear Let me let me go over here. I lost that crowd <laughs> if, if you want to do something you listen Martin Luther King as long as he stood in the, in the churches That was great, That's right. but he changed the fabric of America when they got in the streets Amen. That's, right. That's what they notice and I really believe that flashpoint is the beginning of a, not a movement, but a lifestyle. That's true. That you are I starting agree. to see, people are starting to see what America should be Amen. through this. That doesn't mean we hate, we don't hate Democrats, we don't hate Republicans or Independents. You know, we hate the devil. Yeah. But if you're acting like the devil and you happen to be a Democrat, <laughs> or, or, or a Republican, <laughs> don't get mad at me now, or an Independent, then we want to get the devil out and keep you here. Yeah. We're not trying to get rid of people. Well, some we try yeah. to get rid of. <laughs> you know. And if President Biden, if you listen, I hope you turn the television on. Because we got some good things to say to you. <laughs> we really do. And I think you'll enjoy Flashpoint. Because you're going to get a flash. <laughs> I think I better shut up, Jane. You know, <laughs> I want to hear what Kathy has to say. Oh, well, praise God. It's so good to be here. Hello, everybody. Jesse and I were so blessed when we drove up and we saw all the cars waiting in line. I know they may have turned people away. This is such a special night. I love the fact that we can come here together as believers, as people of, of, that love our nation, that can stand up for Jesus, stand up for the Word of God, stand up for yeah. what is right. Yeah. Amen? I was just thinking about some other people that stood up for what was right. And you know what they did? They turned the world upside down. Yes, the word tells us that when you stand up for God and what is right, the whole world will take notice. And I believe that the world is listening right now in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Pastor Mac or Lynn, whoever's first. Uh, I better take it while I can. I think, uh, <laughs> I think honestly, as a pastor, it's uh, been shocking to me over the years to see how many Christians think they should not be involved in the political arena. That's right. That somehow uh, the church and politics don't mix. Yeah. And Flashpoint is making it clear that is a fallacy. Yeah. We are to go ye right. into all of the world, and that includes the political arena. That's right. And, yeah. and so essentially our influence should be stronger than any influence that acts in the halls of Congress. Right, right. And so we're going to learn a little bit more about how to do that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now. Hallelujah. Well, it's true. Everything that we've said here, everything that we are saying, it's true. And it, all t it takes all of us. If we were just here tonight, it wouldn't work. We have to have all of us together, Amen. working together. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. All right. Would you give them a hand? Leo, y'all can go down. Go down. Stay here. Don't move. Well, I found a few friends in the lobby, <laughs> and I think I'll have them out. Would you please welcome Hank Kuhneman? There he is. This is the man that keeps telling you to give him 15 Dutch sheets. Do I, do I have, did the next one make it? He's here, fresh off the airplane. Please welcome Rick Green.
He is our Hispanic brother, Tony Suarez. And back again because he pays me, Lance Walnow. <laughs> Give him a hand, would you? Hello, my brother Gene. Oh. All right, sit down. Sorry, Brother Copeland always gets on to me, said I need to be nicer. Sit down, please. Uh, all right, so this is we start every Flashpoint Live this way. Normally, we save the lightning round for the end, but we're going to start off with there. I want you to hear right off the top what they have to say about what's going on in America, and I'll start with you, Lance Walnut. Well, Gene, I was told I get to sit next to you. What happened to the chairs? We're not well, the... In a moment. This is the economic version of the <laughs> lightning round. This is to keep you short. This is historic. I don't know how we schedule these things at these times, but for those of you that don't understand what happened in Washington, D.C., it was the people's movement expressed through a remnant that shows we can not only bark, but we can bite. And that's, that's right. new. That's right. We're going to talk about that tonight. Tony. Well... There was a word given at the opening of the Heavens Conference, and the Lord said, you're, con you're too concerned about the extremities of the nation. He said the battle is going to be won in the middle. In Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, Kentucky, Nebraska, Iowa. We're not hoping for victory. We're expecting victory, and it's coming in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Jesse. We have 50 states in this great nation, and each state is totally unique and different. But for us to do what God wants us to do, we have to become one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That's where power is. Unity. Not uniformity. Unity. See, unity means that I got your back. And if we'll do that, ladies and gentlemen, America will turn back to its Christian, Judeo-Christian ethic. I'm Jesse Duplantis, and I approve this message. <laughs> Rick Green. Well, and to be a nation under God, we've got to be individuals under God. That's why this balance at Flashpoint is so good. I'm honored to be with these men of Issachar. No better time than to be with a bunch of men of Issachar. We don't want to be the Ephraimites in Psalm 78 that ran from the battle, even though they were armed to the teeth. Right. We want to be the men of Issachar that understand the times and know what to do. That's the kind of people you're going to hear from all weekend, including Floyd Brown right there tomorrow afternoon. So get ready. Buckle up. These historic times. We've got the answers because God has the answers, and we're going to save this nation. Amen. Dutch. Well, I was listening to your openings, and I heard Pastor Hammond say something about government and the church working together. So I'm going to read a quote, my favorite quote, from one of our presidents, John Quincy Adams, who said, The highest glory of the American Revolution was this. It connected in one indissoluble bond. Let's say indissoluble. In one indissoluble bond, the principles of civil government with the principles of Christianity. That's a president that said that. That is a president. That's a president. Wow. Wow. Pastor Hank. First of all, it's an honor to be here. I feel the spirit of prayer in this church. This is fantastic. How many of you, you, you feel it too? <laughs> I want to share something to those of you that are watching that happened to me yesterday morning at 4 a.m. in the morning where I was awakened to the voice of the Lord. And how many of you, you had something happen to your phone yesterday? There was some kind of emergency broadcast system, and some people, you know, they shut their phones off, others they put it in a microwave, others they did all kinds of stuff. Here, here's the point. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me at four in the morning, and this is important for us to hear because this is a message from the heart of the Father. He said, I have measured something in the earth, and I have measured something among my people that has grieved me. And I said, what is it, Lord? He said, the fear mongering that is taking place. And he said, what happened yesterday was the emergency broadcast system but I believe there was a signal sent from the throne room do you really believe that America is going to be saved yeah. 
do you really, really believe that God is at work in our country? Then it's going to require turning off some of the people that are fear-mongering and start getting back in our Bibles and believing what God has said through his word and through his prophets because he is Emmanuel. He is God for us. He is God with us. And listen to this. He is God victorious and America will be saved. Hallelujah. Well, you're in for a treat tonight, all day tomorrow and tomorrow night. Now, uh, Hank, Pastor Hank, Pastor Hank, you, you skipped over the scripture references that God showed you yesterday about. Tell, go ahead and take the time to talk oh, okay. about Okay, well, and, and again, I'm not here to rebuke. I'm just here to give what I felt the Lord say to us, and that is, look, we've got to raise the faith level. Will the Son of Man find faith when he comes again upon the earth and not the fear mongering? And so when people were writing our ministry about this, you know, thing with the cell phone, you know, it's uh, Ezekiel 7:26 says that disaster upon disaster, rumor upon rumor, then they will seek for a vision from the prophet. The prophets are not to get caught up in the rumors of the land. And there was so much rumors. And Jesus even warned us. He said, uh, Pastor Gene, there's going to be rumors of war. There was a rumor of war, and it was sent. It was by a spirit of fear to get you into the warfare realm of fear, so that you don't operate by faith. You don't operate uh, according to the word of God. And so God gave me, it was on 10-4, he gave me 2 Corinthians 10-4, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God, watch this, to the pulling down of strongholds. What would have happened if we would have put less emphasis on what to do with our phone and more emphasis on what we should be doing with the word of God? We have Dead. authority to pull down strongholds. Jesus said, I've given you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the devil. And watch this. Here's preservation. By no means shall anything harm or injure us. So what are we afraid of? Lastly, he quoted to me, and I, I didn't even know this scripture. It was Luke 10, 4. And I went and I looked it up in my Bible and uh, thinking that, that I didn't hear correctly, you know, because I just, you know, what's Luke 10, 4? And Jesus gave instruction. He said, don't carry a purse. Don't carry a script. If he was speaking to us today and he was talking to how... Uh, the emergency broadcast system signal was sent and God's testing and measuring. He would have said, don't take your cell phone. We are becoming too dependent upon natural devices. And if we have that kind of mentality, we will never see the level of deliverance to a nation that God is wanting. We've got to shift over into the spirit now and begin to use our right. authority as believers and take our country back. Amen. You agree with that? Welcome back to stage, Lance. Hank, I forgot what your name, Rick, yeah. Um, we're going we're gonna to dive into this a little bit because there's been a lot of misinterpretation. Come on, there's going to be a test later, y'all need to listen. Yeah. I see, I pointed at Hank and I said, Lance, Rick. Have, Pastor yeah. Gene, it happens all the time. I get stopped and people say, you're Lance Green. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you're Lance, you're Lance Beta. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they tell right. me they tell me how much they love my Hank's ministry, and it's really they, they think I'm Hank. That's the problem. So. <laughs> really, it actually happens. All right. Yeah, it's when we see Pastor Hank with a whiteboard, we know it's all over. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna draw a cartoon. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So a lot of you are wondering because I I see what you say online, and uh, I know that you're all confused about this whole thing with the Speaker of the House. So we're gonna break it down a little bit for you. Why should you be concerned? No, for the reasons you've already heard tonight. You already had a church service tonight. Talking about not sitting at standing in fear and being active in, in what God's called you to do. But Lance, let's, t let's take it. You weren't with us Tuesday night because you were traveling. Yes. And, uh, you know, I, I haven't asked you about this, but uh, McCarthy being ousted. All right, first of all, 1910 was the only time this has ever come up before. It was with uh, Jim Cannon, I believe. Jim Cannon, Republican, and he was not, it didn't pass. They tried to oust him. The Cannon Building in D.C. is named after him. Am I getting this all right, Rick? I think it's Joe, but I can't remember. Jo Joseph Cannon, you're right. I think. Jim I, is his yeah. brother. <laughs> Who's related to Lance Green. Yes. <laughs> By the way, I keep getting donations in the mail to Lance Green, and I'm not sending them to yeah, either of you. Yeah. I'm uh, just going to uh, cash them. So... Lance, I'll let you go first at it. All right. My people perish for lack of knowledge. 
the thing that we've been getting, and it's been a battle. Thank God for Flashpoint, for Brother Copeland, for, for, for Gene per persevering in the way that we've been since the election started. Now, and of course, you know, what's interesting to me is the whole prophetic, in a sense, cottage industry of political prophets had risen up as a result of all the turmoil Americans in, because Christians want to know what's happening and, and, and why it's happening. The challenge is you have to know something, really, about what's going on at a deeper level than you're even hearing from conservative voices. Newt Gingrich, for instance, Mark Levin, totally missing it. And this is a moment, a cautionary moment. You have to take heed not only how you hear, but what you hear. Because if you're under the influence of, well, these are really great guys, and they really, you know, Mark Levin, he's, really, he's totally missing it on several subjects. So here's the, here's the skinny, short version of what happened in Washington. McCarthy came in as the number one fundraiser. Understand that the Speaker of the House, the role is they will help get other people elected. They've got to be good at raising funds. $200 million would be like a, a, a target for the Speaker of the House to have to raise. So McCarthy was the best fundraiser. Great personality, smart mover, but his principles weren't actually as deep as we need believing in the causes we have, such as battling on the debt reduction. What he did that was unconscionable to those of us that are watching, $31 trillion of debt, seeing the devil trying to bankrupt America, literally destroy it by fiscal irresponsibility. He let Biden's administration get not one year, but two years of free access to be able to bloat their budget under the promise he gave to seven or eight patriot Republicans who said, listen, we're a little worried about you. If you don't do what you say you're going to do, we're going we're to actually pull you out of this seat. And they, they warned him they would do it. Well, he made a deal he didn't have to make with, with uh, Biden. I'm going to give you two. He took the issue of fiscal responsibility away from Donald Trump so that if Trump runs, he can't fight on that line of overspending. And we are $2 trillion over debt, over expenses right now on the credit card every year. Then he said, all right, we'll make it up. Don't worry about it. We're not going to be doing these big package deals like government loves to do, slip all this pork in and then just slip. We'll do item by item. We're going to do category by category voting. Then he puts off dealing with category by category until it's too late and says, well, we'll just have to push it through. So you start looking at what someone does, not what they say. And, the, and he promised we would have categorical analysis of what we're spending. So you could see if you want $100 million of LGBT training in the Ukraine billion-dollar budget. So they slip that stuff in. But if he pulls it out and says, let's go over the military budget, all America is going to go look at, oh, well, well, we don't need that, do we? So he, but he played a game. He made it so that he would be able to slip it through as a, as a package deal. This is where the knowledge comes in. Matt Goetz said, we cannot keep playing games with the budget. What are we doing with the Biden impeachment? Why was Donald Trump Jr. on the Hill three times in the same amount of time it takes to even get Hunter Biden to come up once? You're not serious. So he called his bluff. Here's the interesting thing. Charlie Kirk talked to, to Matt Goetz the night before they did this vote. And Matt said, I don't really think they're going to in, in, in pull him out. I don't think we've got the votes for it. I just want to send a message that he better start governing the way he said he was going to govern. Yeah, he was the most shocked guy in the room when he found out he actually did pull him out. <laughs> now, what's good about it is you've got, you've got a moderate who's a good guy, Steve Scalise. I love Steve Scalise, but he's more moderate. We need somebody... The only other guy that could take that spot that would be more strong, more resolved, that had the energy and could raise the money is, is Jordan, Jim Jordan. If we get Jim Jordan, we, we came right up to the edge of a precipice where we almost shot ourselves in the foot and we actually upgraded to a representative that will represent us. That's my take on what's going on. So don't listen to Newt, don't listen to Levin, don't listen to the other people that think this is disruptive it's the kind of disruption you've got to have. That's right. I agree. Yeah. Rick, Rick yeah, um, man, every, every word Lance said is, is always spot on. It's, it's we need the disruption. I mean, we are the Titanic right now, headed to the iceberg. Thirty-three trillion in debt. The border wide open. 
all of the insanity and all the Republicans have done so far is kick the can down the road. A little victory here, a little victory there. We didn't even start impeachment uh, you know, investigation until eight months into having the majority. I mean, all of those things just had all of us sick and tired of the same old thing, continuing resolutions. And so essentially, Matt Getz has, you know, grabbed the wheel and jerked, you know, to the right. Um, and the Titanic is, uh, is, is at least has a chance of turning away from the iceberg. And so a lot of people are getting a little seasick from this, including Newt and Mark Levin, I guess. And, and I love those guys. I mean, listen, I've ever read pretty much every book they ever put out. I, I think they've been right on so many things, but I couldn't agree with you more. They're dead wrong on this. And it's, again, it's the difference between being the men of Issachar and being the Ephraimites. The men of Issachar, it, in today's language, we know what time it is. We, we realize what's at stake here, and there aren't enough in Washington, D.C. that do, but yet there's this remnant that is actually forcing their hand now. And, and, and like you said, they put this literally into the playbook back in January. If it hadn't been for the 20 that held out back in January to put this in, we would not have been able to pull this lever. So that was brilliant back then. Those guys did a and, great job and the, only, and the only reason I'm bringing up Newt and Mark Levin, for, for the audience's sake, is you need to hear these guys. They are. Like, they, they're the founding fathers of the conservative movement. Yeah. I'm bringing them up because they have labeled Matt Goetz and the other, right. vo other courageous patriots that took a stand as traitors. And I have a philosophy. I will not really speak. You'll never hear me comment much about anything that is controversial when it comes to people that are supporting us on our team. I say my quote is, I don't have any, any enemies to the right of me. I don't like it when preachers beat up on the people to the right of them. It's a cheap shot. The left loves it, and it hurts us. But here's a case when you call someone a traitor who is actually doing something that requires courage, you need to come out and name names and say they're wrong. And, and, and part of it, too, is exactly what you said. You know, Kevin McCarthy essentially did what Newt Gingrich did 30 years ago. So Newt was the one in 91, 92, 93, going all over the country, helping to get us to a majority, helping those candidates win. And Kevin did that for the last six or seven years. And so he sort of, you know, earned the position, if you will, even though he wasn't where we wanted him to be. And that's why he was able to just squeak across the finish line in January, because he had been out there building that coalition and getting those Republicans elected. And had he followed through with the promises, he would have held on to the speakership, but he didn't. And this whole idea of making this deal with the Democrats and continuing the Ukraine funding and all of those things was just finally too much. So I'm very, very thankful that the, the guys that stood up did. I don't know where it's going to go from here. I agree totally with you. I think Jim Jordan would be the best. In fact, our knee-jerk reaction the other night, remember, we said, yeah. you know, you, you gave a list, and we were like, yeah, Jim Jordan would be the best, but we need him to be leading the investigation on the impeachment thing as well. He's the best one uh, in the House to do that, so we can't have him in both. Anyway, we'll, we'll see what happens with it. But if all of this shocked you, you haven't been watching Flashpoint long enough because Hank basically prophesied all this stuff weeks and weeks and weeks ago. Another reason why watching Flashpoint gives you a chance to understand the times and know what to do. Yeah, all right. Before Pastor, yeah, it's good. Thank you. All right, before Pastor Hank comments, I want to show you, you know, you mentioned Ukraine. Look at what Politico said about Ukraine. Here it comes. There it is. Ukraine's freaking out as McCarthy. I just like saying that really loud. <laughs> Ukraine is freaking out as McCarthy chaos threatens U.S. aid. House, ousting of House Speaker McCarthy, concern and give. Ukraine's become a tool. Now, the interesting thing is it said Was Ukraine. Was that a Lance impersonation? Were you reading no, that? No, like, if I'd have no. said, oh, boy, then that would have been, you know. Uh, but Pastor Hank, you know, this whole thing with Ukraine is I think a lot of Americans really thought this thing would have ended by now. One way or another, we'd be done with this. Instead, it's turned into this huge hole that we keep pouring billions of money into. Uh, you know, I want you to speak to the, what you've heard tonight and, and anything that you, the Lord has shown you well, as far I want as what's happening. be able to go back to the Speaker of the House. You know, people have been asking me, well, what about President Trump? And I think if President Trump was here, he'd say, listen, I think that would be terrific. I'd be the, I'd be the fantastic Speaker of the House. I would be the most terrific. I'd be the, I'd be the best that there ever was. I would be the finest speaker. <laughs> okay. so, hey, hey, just imagine, listen. just imagine if he was sitting there <laughs> yeah. for the State of the Union <laughs> so. while Joe Biden's giving his speech and he could be sitting there laughing at him the whole time. Yeah, there you go. That's the speaker of listen, the Listen, I think it would be fantastic. I think we ought to do it. You know, listen, why don't we do it? Anyway, uh, but we'll, we'll see. But here, here's the thing with Ukraine. You know, years ago, the Lord had prophesied something very interesting and it was around uh, 2014 and then it was in six, uh, like 2016. 
And God was saying, he was speaking about China uh, prophetically, you know, China, what are you up to? And then he began to call out Ukraine, and he began to say that there was uh, handshakes and money laundering and deals that were being done under the table by our government. And these were prophecies that were way before, obviously, what we're seeing. And those of you that are watching that's happening in Ukraine, really, do, does any one of us really know why are we in Ukraine? What, what is the purpose of this war? And God kept saying it. There is handshaking. There are deals that are being done that I'm going to expose, expose, expose. But here's the thing. Getting back to the Speaker of the House situation, you know, here they are trying to defend the border of Ukraine. And I'm looking at what about the borders of the United States of America? I mean, this doesn't even make good common sense. So we need some representation. And this is the thing that I always uh, I, I look at with the GOP. You know, they say that they are for the people. But are they really? A lot of them. No, they're more about what their agenda is. And, and uh, they're more about, uh, you know, dirty deals and things that the American people is not America first. And I think what the Lord is trying to get us to understand that he is involved in this. And I want to say this. I wrote this uh, on Flashpoint and I realized that I had this still in my Bible, but God prophesied. So, on, so you got my notes? Is that? I got oh, your yeah. notes. Yeah, I got your notes, but they're in, they're in Chinese. Um, but the, <laughs> on December 31st of 2022, God said, watch the house for he would shake it and would become the house of cards. He said on June 6th of 2021, that there shall be those who are a stench in the sight of God that will be removed and it will be historical and you will say what is this as new faces arise to set things in order on uh, Ju July 12th of 2021 God says watch what I do to do that which is historical that has never been done before in your government in your house I shall be known as the party crasher but there is one yeah isn't that great God is the party crasher you know and again, this is good versus evil. It isn't so much, you know, Democrat, Republican. But I do want to share one other prophetic word very quickly uh, as it comes to my recollection of my recollection. And that is this. Um, it was on December 31st of 2022. is our New Year's Eve uh, service. The Spirit of God said, uh, for so long, people have been going, well, God, it looks like things are even in our, in our country. It's like, when are we going to see you know, righteousness prevail. When are we going to see justice? It just seems like, you know, back in the days of the book of Exodus where the magicians could emulate everything that God was trying to uh, display with his power through uh, Aaron and, and, and Moses. And, and finally, God's finger got involved. Remember that? They said, we can't, we can't touch this. This is the finger of God. And God came in with his finger and everything shifted. And I'm here to tell you that this thing that has happened with McCarthy is a sign. I hear something in the spirit realm that great change is in the air. And this is part of the indication that God's got his finger on this country. He's got his finger on the Senate, the House, the White House. And I'm telling you, Justice is coming, and it's going to be served. And here's why this is important. On that night that God prophesied on December 31st, he said, watch, you're going to shift from 2022 to 2023. And he said, notice that you go from two to three that there are things that are going to shift now that are going to be greater on behalf of what I'm doing and my people that's why it's not 2022 it's 2023 and then he said prophetically watch three in the senate and they will say are they alive what has happened to these three in the senate and God said it'll happen this year and I remember when it came out of my mouth I never like giving dates because man people will hammer you but it came out so strong but think about it Fetterman, Feinstein, and uh, what was the other one? And, and Mitch McConnell. All of this in the Senate. And God said, there will be three significant things that you will know that I am involved in your government. And I'm going to start shifting it. When you see this with these three Senate, you're going to start seeing the balance of power from 2022, where it looks like it's even, to the finger of God shifting it to 2023. We're going to start seeing a freedom come to our country. All right, Lance, I didn't, I, I'll give you a chance to comment on the Ukraine, uh, the whole Ukraine story and where things are with that. Ukraine, listen, when you, the thing that we're learning, and this is where the knowledge comes in, I have hope that the body of Christ is getting such a massive civics lesson. Perhaps God's teaching us how to disciple Amen. nations, Amen. understanding the mechanisms, getting involved with how they work. The pharmaceutical industry, we now know, is a multi-billion dollar industry. When, they, when, you've got, 
When you have them basically controlling all of the corporate buys on advertising on the news, it helps you understand why the vaccine issue gets pushed so sympathetically to getting the, the, the shot. When you look at the military industrial complex, it was Eisenhower years ago who made the comment about warning about the military industrial. What was he talking about? Raytheon, big money, big portfolios, lots of bucks that comes out of that $100 billion contract, going to the third, a country ranked as the third most corrupt in all the world. Well, what, where does that money go? There's no accounting for where that money goes. How do you know that money isn't circulating into dark money coming right back into candidates in the United States that are trying to take over power? So, so the, 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 that's the financial motivation behind wars. Donald Trump said, well, we don't have time for Hank to impersonate him. Uh, he, says, he says, I could end it in 24 hours. And everybody laughs. But uh, you really shouldn't laugh at Donald Trump because he knows exactly that Putin just wants to have a guarantee that Ukraine isn't going to become a nuclear-armed outpost like we don't really want Cuba becoming nuclear-armed on the coast of Florida. It's an understandable proposition. Trump could negotiate uh, a, settle, a peace there. Biden doesn't want it because in the minds, and this is, this, is, this is where I think it's important to get into the, where they're coming from. There's a number of them, like Lindsey Graham, I really believe, who is part of that industrial military complex. He gets money. He, he gets elected because he keeps, he keeps satisfying those guys. That's true. But they really believe something. And if you want to pray with faith, pray that these ideas are plucked down and discredited. He believes it's better for us to take 5% of our domestic um, budget for military, which is like the, the, like the trillion dollars we spend for defense, Take 5% to grind down Russia because Russia's our enemy. Well, now, Russia is actually not the enemy. They think it's in their head. There's still, there's a devil talking to these guys in Washington. Now, what makes Russia the enemy? You ready for this? You should have Floyd Brown talk about this tomorrow when it's off camera. You should know the percentage in the State Department that are LGBTQ that hate Putin because he is anti-homosexual. The agenda in the State Department is largely to vilify, demonize, and keep the Jew. The Soviet Union already collapsed. Russia is a country. It's not the Soviet Union anymore. It's like Trump said, why do we need NATO? NATO was there for the Soviet Union. Soviet Union doesn't even exist. Why do we need it again? They freaked out. You need NATO to keep the industrial complex fed. So, so here's the deal. There are people in Washington that think Russia is a great danger, a great per It'll go right, you watch, it'll eat up all the European nations, and then China's gonna go for Taiwan. That's the assumption. That's why we must defeat them and grind them down and not let them win. The reality is, Russia's not actually interested in it. They're interested in securing their country. They're not interested in trying to take over, they could barely take Ukraine. They're not trying to take over Europe. So this is basically a State Department obsession and it's a demonic obsession to bring division in the world where the United States should actually be a force for peace. Amen. That's good. So, are you taking notes? You ought to be taking notes. This is good stuff. They're doing exactly what I told them earlier. All right, so I want to talk to you a little bit about Speaker of the House because there was something that came out. I don't know if you remember uh, Bowman... Uh, went and, you know, there's an alarm went off and, well, Babylon B put something out. I want to make sure you guys saw this because this is newsworthy. Democrats proposed 12 billion study to determine what this strange red handle thing he does. <laughs> Hopefully they take that down quick because that, that might get funded. Yeah. So, um, I, all right, have you enjoyed this so far? <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to let these guys go for just a few minutes, and I'm going to ask Jesse DePlanis to come out. Would you please welcome Jesse DePlanis? <laughs> no, really, he's coming.
give Micah a cue. I, I said, and now Jesse Duplantis. Was that all? I thought that's that was what I would say. Uh, all right, so we're gonna we're gonna do something right now. It's very important, and that's take up the offering. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna ask. I asked uh, Jesse to help me tonight because because uh, I want him to help me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I, I've had to this whole thing with Flashpoint Live. It's been a. I'm gonna be real honest with you, Jesse. It was it was a real struggle for me to even ask for the offering. I just didn't. I didn't want, you know, in my mind, I was thinking about people are going to think this is all about the money or, you know, or church thing or, you know, people get all kind of crazy ideas. Then I realized they're going to think that anyway. Right. (laughs) If they're thinking that, they're going to think that anyway. But listen, what has happened in in the three years that we've been going, people have responded wonderfully. Mm -hmm. But we are just, we're getting ready to end 23 and 24. Ladies and gentlemen, in 2024, we have more events than we've ever had. In one solid year, we're going to be busier because I don't know if you know that there's an election coming next year. Have you heard that? Yeah, there's an election next year. Uh, but Jesse, why? I would like for you to take up the offering and talk about why they should give. Okay, can I take it home? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, first thing first, let me tell you something about money. The gospel's free, but it takes tons of money to get it out. Because Satan is ruling and controlling in the monetary world. And if money is so bad, why do you have a hard time giving it away? Answer that question. If it's that bad, you know, if you eat something bad, you spit it out, right? Naturally, you would. But you ain't going to spit your money out. If money's so bad, why do you retire on it? Why do you send your kids to school on it? Why do you buy groceries with it? Because we live in a monetary world. And people have heard me say there's only two places I know where money is never used. Number one is heaven, and the other is Star Trek. <laughs> Think about that. You never see any money on that, you know. So if you can't believe God, why don't you believe Spock and live long and prosper? Okay, what is happening with these finances is to reach people, to change lives one soul at a time. When you understand what that means, every, every ministry, every Christian has an obligation to be a giver. Now, never be afraid to receive an offering. That was the problem with the Apostle Paul. He was always worried about what people would think about the offering. And if you notice, they're teaching apostles. Apostle Peter, Apostle Paul, Apostle James, Apostle John, Apostle Jude. They all had financial trouble. Notice Jesus never had financial trouble. He never had a deficit. Now, what does the Bible say? Does it say follow Paul? And I'm not worried that they lash the shoelaces of the Apostle Paul. But he says, and he said, follow me as I follow Christ. What did Christ do? Christ knew how to receive. Paul didn't. I'll prove it to you. God tried to bless Paul. Now, this is about this offering. God tried to bless the man. You know what he says? Very churchy statement. Uh, I make tents. I work with my own hands. And that's a wonderful thing to be a worker because I'm a generation that works. But what happened, he struggled. But he changes it in the next epistle. He said, I did you a disservice because I did not receive from you. But I have received from Ephrodite the things you have sent me. Now watch this. Now I'm full. I have all. And I abound. Do you see that? So Jesus never had a financial deficit. I've been preaching 47 years. I've never had a financial deficit. I'm never going to have one. Who do you think you are? Keep listening to me. I'm going to tell you who I am. Because it's not me that liveth, that Christ that liveth in me. So we ask you to give today so we can change a nation. Because a nation is made up of people of all kinds. And a lot of them know a lot about God, but most of them don't really know God. They call themselves Christian, but they don't only say that. They say, well, what religion? I'm Baptist, I'm Methodist. You see, it's all these different colored tents, but there's only one God, one nation. See, when we come together. And I sure appreciate you uh, taking on Flashpoint because it takes a lot of money to do these things. I wish it wouldn't. I, w- I mean, I don't charge you. I, you know, and I don't do any of that. And I flew here. I flew in my own jet. Don't get mad, don't get mad at me. <laughs> well, how much it costs? I don't know. <laughs> Why? Because he didn't ask me to pay for it. He asked me to believe for it. Yeah. See the difference? Why didn't Jesus struggle? Because he believed. He received. Lady broke an alabaster box over his feet. 
Oh, man, that made Peter mad. Peter, as well as Judas and all of them. Why wasn't this sold and given to the poor? Let me help you something about the poor. And I believe in giving to the poor. My ministry gives to the poor, and we personally give to the poor. But let me tell you something. Jesus only fed them twice. He stopped. He said, you follow me for the fish. You follow me for the fish and the loaves. In other words, they were a bunch of loafers. <laughs> he didn't do it no more. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. Listen, he didn't do it anymore. Because he would not be taken advantage of. When you give the flashpoint, when you become a flashpoint partner, you go from being a flashpoint army to a flashpoint nation. Amen. Now, you got a choice because it's in the scripture. Some 30, some 60, some 104. I don't believe that. That's why you're broke. That's why you're struggling. When are we going to believe what God says instead of somebody's opinion about what they think he said? Do you see what I'm saying? So finance is vitally important because we live in a monetary world. And, and, and we need whatever you can give, big, small, whatever. Because you can understand, when you understand, when you sow a seed, you dig a hole, right? But a lot of people think the harvest is going to come over there. No, it's going to come out of the same hole you sowed it. That's right. It's going to produce the harvest. And flashpoint needs to be seen everywhere, not on as a, 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 a spirit of faith on it, but a movement, not a lifestyle, more than a lifestyle, a movement to move Satan out of this thing. We have that power to do that. Don't carry a message. Be a message. See, a lot of people are carrying a message, but they're not being a message, you see. So, and, and I'm telling you, I know what Kenneth Copeland Ministry does. I'm on the board. Max on the board. Lynn's on the board. Kathy's on the board. Not just as my wife. No, they're physical board members. You understand what I'm saying? And what we want to do is do so much more, but yes, it sir. takes a lot of money to do those things. Yes, sir. And, and I wish you wouldn't, like I said earlier. But it does. But you know what? You know why it's going to work? Because we trust you. You trust us. And we both trust God. So I'm going to ask you to give today. Your best. Don't give me your church's money. See, <laughs> can I tell you all something? People really get nervous about me when I come to town. <laughs> oh, Lord. He's going to suck all the money. Suck all the money out of the neighborhood. <laughs> and that's said about Kenneth Copeland. Jesse the planners, and, you know, Keith Moore, and the different people. Well, if that's, that's not true. Why? Because the scripture doesn't say that. It says he was so sparingly, reaps also sparingly. He was so bountifully, reaps also bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give. Not grudging nor necessity. For God loveth the cheerful giver. Now watch this verse. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things. That's this last statement. May abound. To every good work, which means you should be a blessing to your church. You don't eat at McDonald's and pay at Wendy's, <laughs> right? That church is supporting you and blessing you, giving you spiritual nutrition. But you can abound to every good work. You see what I'm saying? Now, here's the difference between giving to a political campaign and giving to the God's house. The hundred folds on God's house. If the political person doesn't win, where your money went? Don't shout me down. Listen to me. You see, but when you give into something like Flashpoint, it's more than just a program. See, it's something God wants done. And, we, and that's why we got such turmoil, because we won't come together. It don't take much to get something done if everybody comes together. So we're going to ask you to give graciously. I know I'm taking a little time, but is that all right? I mean, because the anointing of increase is on me. L l gentlemen, listen, listen to me. It's on me. You look at that one rich puppy here. And I don't mean that to sound arrogant or prideful by no means. Because everything I got belongs to my wife. <laughs> a man asked me one time, he said, my, my wife loves the way your wife dresses. And she's got beautiful jewelry. And I said, oh, well, thank you. I didn't know it. It was that one of the Believers Convention, Mac. He said, well, Jesse, can I ask you something? You don't have to answer it. I said, no, I'll answer it. What's the most expensive thing you've ever given your wife? I said, my name. <laughs> <laughs> my name, man. Kathy's got my name. She can spend everything I got. I don't have her name. She can use my credit card. I can't use hers. Jesus gave us his name. And in that name is Flashpoint. To go in all these different places. So we're going to ask you to do your best. What is their best? What can you do? We can actually, if you believe God, pay the whole budget for all next year in one offering. That's right. 
Why do we have to piecemeal it? No, brother. You understand what I'm saying? And most people do it. Yeah. Well, you know, we give this and that. Why can't we just knock the sucker out and go on? You see what I'm saying? Because if you see people think, well, you can't do that. Whoa, 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 wait. God said you can do all things. Now, either you lying or God's lying, I pick you. Because he's not man that he can. That's right. So we're going to ask you to do your best. And you know what? When you get to heaven, somebody's going to come up to you that you never thought would be there. I'm one of the flash born on me, Ben. And because you gave, I made heaven my home. Amen. Think about that. For, this is not just money. This is blood money. This is changing people. Reaching people, changing lives one soul at a time. So I want you to think about that, to be a partner to this situation because they use it for God's glory. Now, one thing I know about Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, <laughs> that's some honest people. Yes, sir. I see everything they do. Mac, am I telling the truth? Kathy, <laughs> I mean, uh-uh. that man is, and that woman's a giver, and they show us so much information. A lot, by the time we finish the board meet, we're like, yeah. <laughs> you know, but he wants us to know. How many of y'all want to be blessed? Amen. Now, I'm going to say something sound arrogant. Just because I came here tonight, you're going to get blessed. Oh, that sound arrogant, don't it? Don't that sound cocky? No, that's confidence and assurance. That's right. Well, one of you were right. Praise God. Come on. Do you see what I'm saying? This anointing of increase, it, it's on me. It is on me. It's on me. I want it to come upon you. Now, you've heard people have been attacking me for years over jets. Y'all heard it? You saw ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox wanted to kill me. I'm still here. I said, well, how couldn't, they, how, couldn't they, how couldn't they kill you? I made them an offer. They couldn't refuse. <laughs> and I did. And it was the author of the Lord Jesus Christ. They couldn't handle that. See, they back up on that kind of stuff. So I'm going to ask you to do it today and be a part of what God is doing. See, a flashpoint army, if you're going to win a war, you've got to act like a unit. But then we've got to get past the flashpoint army to the yes, flashpoint sir. nation. Yes, sir. Well, you move around quick, don't you? Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. See, I know I'm going long, but listen to me. God is watching this offering. He notices what people get. Now, he don't need nothing. He's El Shaddai, not El Chipo. Right. But you need what he has. And how you do that is through sowing and reaping. All my life, I was told, I was raised Roman Catholic. I was told, give and don't expect nothing in return. Totally contrary to the word of God. Totally, completely contrary to the word of God. God said, receive a harvest. And I said, how much? He said, a hundredfold, not a hundred times. That's mathematics. hundredfold. It's got to get to a figure that your mind tilts. And that's the kind of God we serve. So I'm going to ask you to do your best. And I promise you, Gene is going to do right by it. I know Gene, I've been knowing Gene for a long time. Why? Because this is on his heart. Him and his wife, Terry, this on... This, this is a ministry, and he works for Kennecott Ministry. Don't misunderstand him. Does a great job and all that other stuff. But this is really on his heart. And why? Because it's God's heart. I'll say this and I'll shut up. For God so loved the world. Look at me, you that are watching online. you the world. Watch what God did that he gave. What did he give? Something more important than money. His only begotten son. That whosoever believeth. Are you believing what I'm saying? That's right. Whosoever believe it. Whosoever believe it. If this thing was not right, I would not be here. You know the kind That's of right. man I am. Yes, sir. I mean, I tell everybody everything, and they think it's bragging. No, I just want to let you know that when the devil starts lying, you already know the truth. You see what I'm saying? So, and I mean that. I mean, <laughs> I don't want to say that long. If they let me run this United States, I can get rid of this $32 trillion debt. I know how to do that. I know something about money. I know something about finance. I know how to do that. I got hedge fund operators on Wall Street saying, you got to quit that preaching business and get on the street. I said, I ain't quitting the preaching business. This is what God has called me to do. But if you ran your house like this government, you wouldn't have a house. You'd be under a bridge right now. You know it and I know it. So we got to do something about it. And Flashpoint is one of the tools that God will use to knock out debt. Can I say one more thing? Yes, Louisiana, a Louisiana senator asked me, you know, a lot of people like you. I said, I'd like to know where they are. 
It's always here about the bad ones. I don't hear about the good ones, you know. He said, well, what would you do on this $32 trillion debt? I said, well, pull a, pull a bill out. He pulled a $20 bill out. I said, what does it say on the front of it? He says, a Federal Reserve note. I said, that's right. That's a $32 trillion debt on that. He said, that's right. I said, turn it over. He turned it over. I said, what do you see there? He says, uh, in God we trust. I said, that side is debt free. Your side is $32 trillion in debt. Now, you want to get out of debt? I said, quit giving churches grants and start sowing donations into the churches all over the place and believe for the hundred folk. We'll have so much money, we won't know what to do with it. We'll knock out the multi-trillion. I'm telling you, you'll never have to worry about your grandchildren and all that kind of stuff. Because one thing I know about God, he will do what he says. So are you ready to give tonight? Uh, can, can I talk to the people there that, that, that online? You, you're going to give yeah, them all the information? I'll them. Okay. And I want you to do your best. This is the first time I've ever received an offering for Flashpoint. Yes, sir, it is. First time you've asked me. I, I didn't know you was going to ask me. Yep. I'm glad you did. And God will honor you. Get ready to do something, Brother Jim. Yep. All right. So if you'd like to give, first off, if you're in the room here and you need an envelope for your giving, just raise your hand. The ushers are, are, have already been in the aisles, and they will give you an envelope. If you're making a check, you can make it payable right to Flashpoint. It's still tax deductible what you give. Uh, make it payable to Flashpoint. If you want to go online, you can go to uh, govictory.com slash fpgive. Those of you watching on television, fpgive, you see the information on your screen. Now, many people do this, and it's amazing uh, because of the convenience. If you want to just text it, uh, just text the number 36609, the dollar amount, and the code FLASH, F-L-A-S-H, and that will go straight. Now, listen, we have a lot of things going. I told you we have uh, more events next year. This year, Jesse, has been a year of training. Yes, sir. We've, we've, we've invested in training. How many of you have gone through biblicalcivics.com? Have you? All right, everyone in this room needs to go through biblicalcivics.com. Sounds boring. It's not. It's not you will be... You will enjoy what you learn about our government and how things really happened. Uh, and it's, it's a great thing. And Rick Green has worked with Flashpoint to make this available for any amount. You can go online and just make any amount and go through all the training. It's something every one of you need to do. Why? Because when something goofy like what happened uh, with the Speaker of the House and all that, you'll know how things are supposed to progress next. And, of course, you're not going to pay attention to mainstream media because they're not going to tell you the truth. And you're going to get a lot of, like, you know, the gentleman was saying before about you get a lot of distorted views. This is why we have to be equipped, Jesse. You know, we've gone to churches. The reason we went to churches this year mainly is because we were doing big arenas, and that was great. But big deal. A lot of people come. That's wonderful. Don't get me wrong. That's wonderful to see a lot of people, and then they go home. We want, we're going to change America by being invested here, right here in Mac and Lynn's church the, here in your church, wherever you live, in your church at home, that's where the change happens because it's not a political problem, it's a spiritual problem. Right. But when we change the spiritual problem, when we get what you're saying, when we get that lined up, the political problem has to come in line with it. Well, it's not who in the White House, it's who's in the church, church house. house. Yeah, See, like you, get the, you get the right person in the church house, the White House is going to be okay. Yep. Amen. Ask George Washington that. Yeah, come on. All right, uh, ushers, you can go ahead and receive the offering in the room. Amen. Uh, thank you on television for letting us take this time. We Listen, I hang out with Jesse DePlantis. I got no problem with vision. That's right. I, know, I, know, I got ideas, y'all. I got ideas I better not say because, you know, they come to pass. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. I learned that from you. Yes, indeed. And so I'm telling you, we got great ideas. And people, when we started, people, we were calling people like, hi, this is, you know, we're Flashpoint, we're a show, we'd like to interview you, and we had to convince people. Now they're calling us. And you prophesied that. Yes, I did. On Burning and, Point. Yeah, you, you talked could, about yeah, that. Yeah, I, I was at my visionary conference. Yeah, at the conference. You came and I said, Gene, stand up. And I gave him a word. Is it going to go from a Flashpoint to a Burning Point? Now, it's amazing. The ones that didn't want to come, now that you're getting popular, they all want to come. They do. They want to come. Why? Because you know what? They got enough sense to know. They're seeing something happening here. Right. And it's going to be, but we can't do it without your help. No, we can't. Jesus needed 12 disciples. Yeah, that's right. I need more than 12. And you need more than 12. <laughs> that's right. You know, one of the, 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 everybody says, well, how wonderful it was to interview President Trump. Yes, it was. And it won't be the last time. The one that shocked me, everybody said, what's the one that shocked you? Benjamin Netanyahu. Yeah. 
asked to be on our program. Isn't that a blessing? Woo. That's a blessing. Is that not amazing? So you know what I did? I said, well, I guess. No, of course. <laughs> yeah, we were down there right now. We're here. So it's been a, it's well, been a blessing. It's just amazing me that yeah. Flashpoint is talking to the biggest political leaders in the world. That's right. Now, really they can is. see that this is a worthy ministry. Why can't you? That's right. Mm. You see, God's making these people see it. Benjamin not knew, is a Jew, but so is Jesus. That's right. Amen. He's still Jewish. A lot of people don't understand that, but he is. That's right. We want to touch the world. We need you to help. So thank you. Thank you, everybody. Give yourself a hand. Thank you for your offering. I appreciate that. We're going to see, we're going to see great things in 24. All right. Let's move on. I want to talk about something that's happened. There's been a lot of talk about the border. We've even talked about it tonight. But let's get the next part of this kicked off by watching this video. Talk about the border wall. What were the, the instructions after the transition of administrations when it came to the wall? So a presidential proclamation came out, and uh, it was a 60-day pause that is uh, publicly available. Uh, we're supposed to do an in-depth study and then come up with a plan going forward. Uh, so Border Patrol did its part, everything. Um, that was done within about two weeks. Uh, several briefings later, uh, there really had not been any decisions made. It went well beyond the 60 days. Uh, many of those projects today are just still on hold. So we're paying contractors. Uh, for a while, it was almost $5 million a day between DOD and DHS. Just to not? Work. To not build the border wall. There's wait, wait, wait. $5 million a day to not build the wall? To not build a wall. Even though they have all the stuff, they have... There are stacks and stacks of border wall uh, panels. There's hundreds of miles of fiber optic cabling. Uh, there's hundreds of, bo of cameras that were being installed with that uh, that are just sitting. There, there's no action being taken. So what do they say when the briefing is, well, this really helps us? If we could just plug this in, if we could just finish this thing, what do they say? We're not building more well. There's no conversation. There's, not, there's no adult dialogue, if you will. It's just... It's just a black and white decision. The administration said we're not doing it, so we're not doing it. That money is just trickling away to those contractors for not doing work each day. Can you believe that? All right, we're going to talk a little bit about the wall, but I, I want to show you something. Look at, look at this picture, and they were referring to uh, what was going on. You see all that? That's 300, Jesse, look at that. There's $300 million worth of wall. The Biden administration just sold it for $3 million, I think. Because they didn't want that laying around. Now they all of a sudden want to do a wall. This is, uh, I have never understood this situation. If you're an American, if you got the, the tiniest bit of patriotism, you would want, you're not saying that we can't, and I want, Tony, I want you to bring up what we talk about with immigration. It's not that we want to keep people out 100%. We want to keep the wrong people out. And when you come to America, you come the right way. Amen? Is there an amen in the house? We want that. But what's happening, what's happening on the border is that we're seeing people come across. They're not from Mexico. They're not. We got Chinese. We got uh, Nicaraguans. We got, uh, we got all Arabs, Syrians. We got all kinds coming across the border. All right, so... I'm going to let uh, Lance go first on the border. Why is it important that we protect? I mean, other than the obvious reasons, we don't want people taking over. But, you know, why is it such a big deal? To, why is this not a bigger deal to those in charge? You know, it's interesting, Jane, is that uh, you want to have an answer that's going to be the one single answer that answers all. But the devil's kind of a master of orchestrating selfish interest. There could be three or four strong constituencies in America that all agree we're going to have an open border. And they all have a different agenda, but they're all in agreement, we're going to have an open border. This is how the big money interest and stuff works. So the big agricultural companies want the cheap and free labor, which is really weird because they want the Democrats in power, and the Democrats tell all of the African-American community, we're going to help you live a better, more prosperous life. And then on purpose, they bring in cheap and free labor that actually undercuts the ability of the black community to get employment and they destroy them so that they will never have a, a, a way out of poverty because they're going to bring in cheap labor that's going to compete with them. But 
that me that message doesn't get out there. So you got that you got that big donor group, that big money group, and it's big it's big ag, which is actually saying they're buying off influence in the Senate and in, in the House to just not not solve the problem until they solve it another way. Klaus Priven is an important word, remember this. Klaus Priven was the was the uh, teacher, the teaching at Columbia University, which o Obama was exposed to, which Blinken was exposed to. And it's how to crash capitalism and fundamentally transform America. And the way you do it is you overwhelm the welfare ability of the nation to sustain itself. The way that you do that is you bring in 20, 30, or 40 million foreigners. They, all of them are going to be supported by the benevolence of the government. You crash the system. The fastest way to fundamentally transform a capitalist nation is to crash its economy and destroy its middle class. So the Klaus Priven School which is the AOC, radical Marxist, progressive Bernie Sanders wings, sees this open border as a quick way to destroy America because it's overwhelming us with, uh, with more debt at the same time. And then there's a third group, the savvy Democrats who say, well, once they're here, what are you going to do, kick them out? We're gonna, we'll play that compassionless, how can you send them back? So we're going to now have them all as voters. So if you can get 20 or 30 million people in, our policies, listen, 75% of America wants that border up. Somehow it's not going up. They're going to bring in 20 million or 30 million or 40 million new voters who are going to vote their policies because America really doesn't like progressive policies. They've got to do a lot of finagling to pull off what they do. 85% of America right now hates the trans movement coming between parents and their children. The data's out, but they're reluctant to give that up. I'm telling you, there's at least three different reasons why you have the dysfunction happening. But the prophetic word for America is, for those of us that are Christians, is if there's a root issue that you want to put your finger on and say, Lord, that's like insidious. you got people trying to crash the economy on purpose to create a communist nation. That's Klaus Priven. you got people that are trying to bring in cheap labor because they don't want to pay the money. Well, that's the your ag people. Then there's the Democrats that want 20 to 30 million new voters that they can get because they're losing votes with thinking Americans. Here's our problem. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. The issue in America is self-control. We've been given freedom. Now we're at a point where our freedoms are destroying us. You want freedom? Well, look at the LGBTQ movement. You know what that is? Freedom gone into lewdness and lawlessness. Look at our budget. It's spending without accountability. What's happening in America is we have not had rule over our own spirit, so we are like a city that is being plundered because we don't have boundaries. Boundaries in terms of behavior, boundaries in terms of spending, boundaries between who is a man and who is a woman. In every area, Satan is tearing down boundaries. If there's a move of God that will save America, it'll have to be in one sense political, but the other part is us. We have to restore the boundaries so that self-control, or the, which is the fruit of the Spirit, can be restored in America, or our liberties will become license, and the license will become lawlessness. You know, we, we talk about this everywhere we go, but Tony, you always bring a unique perspective, a quick history of your background and how you got here and what's, how we need to fix things. Yeah, my, father, my, my mother was a, a white girl from Chicago who got the Holy Ghost and came to Bible College in St. Paul, Minnesota and heard a missionary from Columbia that touched her heart and she went to South America and started evangelizing and preaching the gospel there, met my father who was a Colombian uh, preacher and they came legally, and my father came legally to the United States uh, they were persecuted by the government of Colombia. Their churches were bombed. Their water wells were poisoned. It was sanctioned by the president of Colombia in 1952 to eradicate the group of people that they called Los Aleluyas, which was the tongue talkers. And, uh, and they survived, and God blessed. They prospered. And then my father came to Chicago, and he became a citizen in 1988. My, my brother and I were at that citizenship ceremony. We celebrated that. And my father taught us in ministry that especially within the minority or the Hispanic community, we had two jobs, to assimilate people into the kingdom of heaven and to assimilate them into the United States of America. So my dad didn't just preach the gospel. He taught them how to uh, open a checking account, 
uh, how to buy a house, how to buy cars, and most importantly, how to become a citizen of this nation. We did immigration seminars. And what I think is important, especially for what it's worth, this is Hispanic Heritage Month, and I'm not, we gotta be careful playing the race card, but to what Lance was talking about, uh, about the cheap labor at, at, at the farms, especially on the West Coast. Uh, we hear the race card played so much right now. Hispanics, we could play the race card. Say, well, my God, this is racist. Why doesn't anybody care that there's Mexicans out there picking fruit and vegetables for $7 an hour, seven days a week, working 12 hours a day with no insurance, no vacation? But we, at some point, everybody's got to stop playing that race card, right? But it, it is really there. There's two signs at the border. One says, do not enter. And then there's a bigger one that says, help wanted, inquire within. So uh, my father taught us, but th to every Hispanic and to anyone that has worked within the immigrant community, we have to realize that what's happening at the border today is not what was happening 20 and 30 years ago. This isn't what we used to laugh about on movies, about somebody coming over, working, and then getting deported, and I'll, I'll come back tomorrow, see you manana. This is not that, that's not that day anymore. We've been to the border. We've, we've gone on boats with, with uh, border, border Patrol down the Rio Grande. This is a, a very different reality. And as someone who believes and has fought for immigration reform, because I'm, I'm 43, the last time there was true immigration reform, I was in kindergarten, and Ronald Reagan was the president of the United States. Every time, every time an election comes up, you hear immigration talked about. They campaign on the issue, and then they do absolutely nothing once they're elected. We have to hold them accountable. If I could only fight for one issue, and there's many issues to fight about, but if I could fight for one issue in our politics, it would be for term limits on the House and the Senate and get, re get rid of career politicians that lie to us and the lobbyists that pay for them. I don't believe, I don't believe that lobbyists want to win the issues that they fight for because once they do that, they lose their paycheck. And we're just pawns in their game. But here, here's where we're at with immigration. I think you have to build the wall. You have to secure the border first. And I know a guy who's tall, blonde hair, he wears blue suits and red ties. I said, I, I know another guy who's tall and who tried to build a wall. And when he did it, he was demonized for it. But now it's the bright idea of the Democrats. And they do this constantly. Listen, you remember the pictures uh, of the children in the, the, the quote-unquote cages. Trump didn't build those. Obama built those cages. But when, when, when Obama built them, they said, wow, there's ventilation for the children. That's what they said. It's not concrete walls. There's ventilation for the children. But Trump uses it, and now it's dog cages. Trump tries to build a wall. You're racist. Now Biden says we got to do something. Well, yes, of course. This is, it's this proverbial lying spirit. But... I'm not a builder, but this, this much I know. If I was building a house, I don't start with the door. I start with the foundation, and then I build the walls. And then I install a door. The immigration entry and exit system is absolutely broken. And it must be fixed. But you can't fix the door until you once and for all build the wall and solidify the nation and its borders. Well, I actually have some video to prove what you just said. Look at this 20 seconds worth of video. You have to have walls first. This is just a few nights ago. This is what's at our border. Tony, we have to do that. We have to build the walls. We, we have to build a wall, and then to the point of the word that the Lord gave you about the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We have to think with the, with the, spirit, with, with the mind of the Spirit. How do we win this fight at the border? Spiritually speaking, we go to the border and we have revival. Let's go to the border and preach the gospel. Let's go to the border and teach them about Jesus because one of the greatest harvest fields in every denomination, in every Christian denomination, the fastest growing segment is amongst immigrants. So let's go down to the devil's playground where he is trying to invade our country and let's give them Jesus. Let's preach the Holy Ghost. Let's go give them revival. That's right. So... I dare you to go to the border with Tony next year. 
Do you, you have like an idea of when you're going to do? We, but I told Tinny the Lord. To, Tinny? I told Tony. <laughs> Speak, Lord. Sorry, yes. I am Pentecostal. Anyway, uh, I told Tony that he need to go do, he, need, he must go to the border and do a tent meeting. So he's going to do that. Yeah. And I keep saying that at every meeting to make sure he doesn't yeah. forget. Um, so w- have an idea when you're going to be we down look, there. We're looking at March, and, we're, and now it's expanded. We're going to McAllen, Texas. We're going to El Paso, Texas. And now we have calls from, from a city in Arizona that that's, that's not confirmed, but we're just going to do a border tour. And what we're going to do between those tent revivals is we have a group that's committed to drive all along the southern border and just do a prayer. Instead of a prayer walk, we're going to do a prayer drive. And we're just going to drive all down that southern border and just speak the blessing of the Lord all down the southern border. So how about that? You're going to be a part of that? Yeah. And Flash, I don't know what Flashpoint's going to do, but we're going to we're going to somehow be a part of that. Amen. Maybe we'll take down our, an iPhone and let you see it or something. We'll do something. Uh, you know. Although Hank says I got to put my phone away, so <laughs> no, we'll we'll cover that. But all right. But I we're making a shift now. I don't know if you were ever so perceptive. We've been talking about politics and current events and crazy laws and things that people are doing that's goofy uh, in in Washington, D.C. Hey, there's a whole bunch of people over here. So, (laughs) hey, (laughs) y'all. And hey, up there. Come on, give it up for the balcony. Yeah, hey, guys. I I said it, and it's not just because it's a nice, quaint little saying about we don't have a uh, political problem in America. We have a spiritual problem. We got to change that. This is the beginnings of that. You standing up, you understanding who you are in Christ, you becoming, uh, getting out of your comfort zone, not doing what Pastor Hank was saying. We don't operate in fear. We operate in faith. But you're not going to know how to operate in faith if you don't have your nose in that scripture. Okay? You're going to have to do that and, and watch Flashpoint. So... We, ha- we must understand the times we live in. This is something I was sharing with Pastor Mac earlier, is that we- we've gone across America, and-, and I'm still shocked and surprised at pastors that don't want to get involved. And I understand it, and, I- and I'm really not, for the most part, not knocking a pastor. Uh, because I understand they're in an, and sometimes it's in an impossible position with, with people. But you are a leader. If God has placed you as the role of a pastor or a ministry leader, and I don't, doesn't necessarily mean you got to be the senior pastor. I'm talking about every position in that church. You are a leader. You must be prepared to lead spiritually your flock. What does that mean? Well, the music director's got to, this is a little church conference right here. If you're the music director, you have got to lead and minister to your flock of musicians and your singers. They cannot be out there doing something on the stage because they want to be seen. That does nothing. That has no eternal value. We've seen what that produces. We don't need that. We must see an America change, but it has to change at the church. What Jesse says, change at the church house. We're going to see that first. And when that changes, we take it to the streets, and we take it to the nation, and the Flashpoint Nation becomes involved. And that's what next year is all about. But understanding the border. Yeah, go ahead. Give yourself a hand. What I, what I need to know are, is, do, does this, are you with me on this? Do you get it? Because this is so important that we understand this. And I don't care what denomination you are. As long as you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who suffered, bled, and died for my sins. And it's the only way I'm going to get to heaven we can walk together. Okay. So, with all of that, I'll give it to Dutch, because Dutch, I believe there's something that you have about the borders. We talk about the borders of this nation, but there are borders that we must build spiritually around our house, around our city, our, our, our state, all that, but I believe you have something on that. Well, let me... Just start by saying how, how important I believe it is and how 
what a what a great job you are doing because I'm starting to see the church uh, understand that there we must not separate the spiritual and the civil or government and the church you know we have two two great commissions one is mark 16 go get them saved work miracles get them filled with spirit cast out demons matthew 28 disciple nations and they all go both go back to the first mandates given to adam multiply my family give me more kids adam and steward the earth and so we're now getting back to that and Lance has modeled it for years in the seven mountain teaching, and, and now you're doing it. And it's, it's becoming normal for the church, for at least a portion of it, to see us up here praying and prophesying and quoting scripture and then shifting right over and talking about the border and Biden and Trump. And, and, and there's no contradiction there. God is government. Right. He established government. He wants to move through government. But, you know, as we talk about these issues, I, I, I was asking the Lord, and this really fascinates me because um, 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 4, and 5 keeps being mentioned here. He just referenced it. Weapons aren't carnal, Tony. Right. You went a while ago. We got to get these magi- imaginations torn down. You started with it. I laid down for just a few minutes this afternoon, and I asked the Lord, uh, is there a passage you want me to go to tonight? And he said immediately, 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 4, and 5. He's talking to us. I'm going to read just a portion of one of those from the Passion Translation, although I have several up here. Actually, I'm going to read from the message. Just that verse. We use our powerful God tools or weapons for smashing warped philosophies, tearing down barriers erected against the truth of God. The uh, the passion says we are... energized with divine power to effectively dismantle the defenses behind which people hide. We can demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes God and break through every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance against the true knowledge of God. And the Living Bible says these weapons can break down every proud argument against God and every wall that can be built to keep men from finding him with these weapons... I can capture rebels and bring them back to God and change them into men whose heart's desire is obedience to Christ. Now, what I want to say, our job, see, you know, we don't only have to teach truth. We, gotta, we have to knock down the things that the, the message that are blocking the, the truth from right. getting in there. And when Paul said they're casting down imaginations, that word imagination doesn't mean a thought. That's used later in the verse. That's noema. The word for imagination there is logismos, same root word as logos, the word of God, graphe, written word, rhema, spoken word. Logos is spoken words, but it includes the message in the words. That's why Jesus is called the logos of God, not the rhema of God. He's called the logos because he is the message. And the easiest way to understand logos is the word logic. We get logic, our English word logic, from logos. So it's not a a thought. It's what has been put into the mind that creates a belief system, logic, and now defines this person's uh, concept of truth. He's saying we have more than the ability to pray against these thoughts and strategies and schemes. We have weapons powerful enough from God to war against and tear down that system that has been created, that has built a belief system in them that has taken, this is what I love about it, it's taken the enemy 40, 50 years to instill this uh, belief system in people. And he says, you have spiritual weapons if you just knew it. You, you can release my power, and I can demolish those strongholds, speculations, the way they think. And now the truth can get in and make a difference. Amen. And 
And you said it right, Tony. You said, we got to do more than just fix the wall. We do have to fix the wall. We better be involved in government. We do have to do these things. But then he said, but we have to also understand the weapons of warfare are not carnal. We can do something spiritually too. And I'm here to tell you, for some reason, God has highlighted this gathering. Right. And said, we, I believe he wants us to talk about truth. And I believe at, at some point he wants us to pray into this and begin to model that we have authority to tear down or demolish these mindsets, this logic that has been put in unbelievers to where they believe a lie. We can go, we can be a part of demolishing that. That's my word. Amen. That even got a shofar in there Come with on. that. Um, I, you know, Pastor Hank, I, I, don't, I don't really know where to go next, but I, I'm going to throw it to you. Well, I just want to say this one thing I was just thinking about. You mentioned Ronald Reagan. And how many remember, were you alive when President Reagan said, Gorbachev, tear down that wall. Now, if he was alive today, Ronald Reagan would say, United States will build that wall. Amen. And the reason that I say that is because in the word border, there's the word order. And we have to understand that God is establishing order back in our nation again. Tony, you and I, uh, we went down to an all-access uh, uh, tour uh, by the, the White House back in, I don't remember what year it was. And when I was there... I was um, grieved in my heart because I saw what was a humanitarian uh, situation. It didn't even look like a border retrain, re, uh, what, a retention center or whatever you call it. It was, I mean, I'm watching border agents uh, changing diapers. But I remember the thing that really uh, marked my heart is there was a little boy. He must have been about, I don't know, maybe six, seven years of age, and he was with this man. And he was constantly doing this. And, and so I brought someone who spoke Spanish, and I said, can I talk to this little boy here? He said, sure. I said, young man, is this your father? Is he your brother? Is he your uncle? Do you know him? Did you come with him? And my heart grieved, and I realized that there is something that is going on that is a lot more than what they're telling us, and it has to do with the injustice against the children. And I have been pressing God privately about this because I said, God, you said it's better that a millstone is tied around a neck than for, to cause one of these little ones to stumble. And I think there is a lot of things that is happening within our government and within the nations right now, even with Ukraine, that they won't tell you. They're never going to tell you. But I believe that the injustice has happened to children. And God is doing something behind the scenes. You know, God prophesied, Pastor Gene, before this year. He said, listen to a sound that will come. And it will come from the heavens. And he said, they will say, what is this sound? What is this sound? And this is in 2022 at our conference, September 2022, about 2023. He said, there will be a sound. And they'll say, what is this sound? What is this sound? And the Spirit of God said, it will be that which will be known as a sound that shall come, that shall carry freedom. And 2023 shall be known as a sound and a freedom that shall arise. And it shall come for the children, says the living God. This was before there was any mention of the movie, A Sound of Freedom. We have to start paying attention to what, to what the Spirit of God is saying. Even now, the Spirit of God says, I bring you to a moment when Joseph, he tested his brothers. And his brothers, they spoke lies that caused him to be indicted. Cause him to be falsely accused and cause him to go to prison. And there was one Potiphar, Potiphar's wife, that spoke great accusations against one Joseph. That caused him to be indicted and was part of the reason that prison awaited 
one who is innocent. And yet I speak this at this time when many are looking and they're saying, what is happening in the earth? What is happening with these indictments? What is happening with these accusations against even 145? Is this true? Is these things correct? And God says, listen to me. Did the lies of Joseph's brothers, did the lies of Potiphar's wife ultimately prevail? No. God said, I raised up Joseph again to be a voice to bring forth my purpose, my agenda to a nation, my people. And so God says, I have placed my hand upon this man, 45. And even though the indictments have come, even though they have accused, and even though there have been lies, God says, I remind you what Joseph said to his brothers. And this is what I'm doing in this nation at this time concerning 45, concerning your house and concerning your government. He looked into his brethren and he said, listen to me, what you meant for evil. God meant it for good that you would be saved and many people. And God says, look at the bigger picture now. The reason there has been the injustice, the reason there has been that which I've allowed to be lying spirits and a veil of deception is to show you the goodness of God that shall pass across this earth and my justice shall be seen. And I say to those who are in fear, why do you fear when I have spoken and I say, said to you that I would pass by this nation and my goodness would prevail for the sake of the children and for a generation that exists now and a generation that will come but listen to me carefully my word is declared that I would restore the years that the locust has stolen and they have stolen much they have afflicted your children they have come out the youth but God said as Joseph stood and spoke to his brethren I speak to you now do you understand that even though the youth even though the children they have looked and said we shall change their identity yet there is a movement that shall arise among the children and even among the youth and they will say we are born again and our identity is in Christ and God says this movement shall spill out over into the schools into the cafeterias into the universities it shall carry over into the sporting events and the youth will lead a movement that shall cause the mothers to arise to their defense and the fathers that shall come and say we must come man woman husband wife with our children and we must stand in this land again and God says what they have thought that they would do unto the women to disgrace them to change even their identity there has been this enmity that has happened even in the days when I said there would be war between the woman and thy seed of the enemy and God says listen to me I will raise up as there was in the day when the woman came with an alabaster box and there was an anointing that was contained but yet the anointing was broken and it was spilled out look I shall raise up and I will throw it in the face of the enemy a woman that shall be appointed anointed of me says the living God and you think that you have a vice president do not make me laugh for I will show that there has been an angel of light I will show that there has been a counterfeit in your house called white and I will bring forth Truth, for my spirit is the greatest entity of truth that exists in the earth and my truth will stand and this nation shall march to that truth as I reestablish what a president looks like and I will bring forth a woman that will arise who will carry this anointing that will spill out across this country that will bring the balm of healing healing to the generation of those who have been mutilated, maligned, and that which has been brought bringing confusion at this time and I will set it in order as I bring the truth watch a man a woman and another man and watch his family shall come and they will gather by the millions and they will say we are taking our country back and I will honor that and there will be a great shift that will take place but in the meantime do not be fooled for there will be that which where they will say, look at this death. What does this death mean? What does it mean now? And it will cause a frenzy. It will cause a fear. And it will cause a stirring. But God says, do not be moved by that which they would want you to believe. 
for it is to manipulate, re-manipulate, and to shake and reshape the future of your country. But God says, even though this shall take place, it will not have an effect. For I will cause my light to shine even brighter as I cause there to be one who shall speak for me in your house. And there will be a justice that will come that will cause things that have been swept under the table, laptops that have been closed, emails that seemed as though they have been forgotten. God says, do you think that my finger is not on these things for it has been it shall be and there is those things in the hands of the right people and it will come forth and it will be an hour of the day of deeds and it will be known as the day of reckoning and I will vindicate those who have stood as my remnant and prayed and I will bring judgment to the wicked and I will vindicate and honor the righteous says the living God in this time Matthew 24, 14 says in this gospel, not a gospel, not somebody's opinion about it, but this gospel shall be preached in all the world and the end shall come. Ladies and gentlemen, we're at this place and point in time. This gospel is being preached everywhere. I'm amazed at what Kenneth Copeland Ministries did to put 30 programmers on a victory channel and not charge any of them so that this gospel would be preached. You know, and I was on my plane coming, and the Lord gave me just a couple little points, and I began to realize what was going here. And the Lord said, never sell your liberty for false sense of peace with your enemy. And that's happening right now. You can see it happening. Never sell your liberty for a false sense of peace with your enemy. When you become demoralized, you lose heart, and your spirit is broken. And I can see that happening today. And then the Lord said this, your power of resistance is gone when you submit like sheep to the wolf. And we're seeing that happening today. Then the Lord said this, preaching the gospel has proved to be the most powerful agent of civilization the world has ever known. And everyone that preached this gospel, those nations prospered until they backslid. And then he said this, it's unsafe to breathe unbelief. It has infection in it. Mm. See, what somebody's looking for is someone to tell the truth. That's right. For someone to keep their word. Well, God keeps his word. Flashpoint, Flashpoint was birthed out of that. You see, this is an end time ministry. It is coming to pass. Now, we got a lot of enemies around us, but they cannot withstand the glory and the anointing that's in us. So I asked all of you, were you Baptist, Methodist, Episcopalian, Presbyterian, Church of God, Church of Christ, Word of Faith, Full of Gospels, Assemblies of God, Mennonite, Amish, whatever you call yourself a Christian, set down, set your doctrinal differences aside and come together in the unity of the faith, Amen. and the faith is Christ. Christ, the hope of glory. This gospel, not a certain part of it, this gospel will be preached to the world and the end shall come. That's how you get to the end. People ask me all the time, why do I preach so much? When are you going to retire? I said, well, do I look tired? No, no, no. You know what I mean? And it's not the issue. This gospel. And I see our nation going one way. Great revival happening, yet a great falling away. But notice now, they're starting to bite on themselves. They're starting to deceive themselves. See, it's a slow process, but it's coming to pass. If Jesus doesn't come in my lifetime, I would be shocked. Now, if he don't come get me, I go get him any way I'm going. That's not the issue. But I want to see the America that I was raised up in. I would love to see kids stand up and do the Pledge of Allegiance without somebody being offended. You see what I'm saying? I like to have the schools start off with a day of prayer. 
I, I, that, I came up in that generation. I saw that. Did we have problems then? Yes, but not what we have today. And there's a great war, as uh, our prophet Hank spoke about, against children. There's sexual immorality everywhere. I was the other day in Big Spring, Texas, and as I was moving in the gifts of the Spirit, the Lord spoke to me. He, and I heard this word, rape, loud. I went, rape. And I thought, rape? Would, and he said, tell the people that were raped to come up here. Now, most people said, there ain't nobody going up there. Sixteen people came forward, 15 women and one man. The devil don't care if you're a man or a woman, you know, and, and the Lord gave them the exact same word. They have been carrying that guilt for years. I find no fault in you. You see, when Satan's always trying to blame you, he is, he is the problem. So this gospel will be preached. It will be prophesied. It will be sung about. And it'll come from women and it'll come from men. It, the days of, of a man's world is over. You see what I'm saying? God is calling people who is willing to just do what God tells them to do. You know what I'm saying? And when you understand, one man told me, he said, well, women shouldn't preach. I said, was you born of a woman? <laughs> women are controlling the world, man. You don't even know that. The only reason you got your suit on is because your wife picked the one you wanted, you should wear. <laughs> it's just amazing to me how silly that is. Well, a woman should not usurp authority over me. I said, did you ever go eat dinner in someone's home? Yeah. I said, did a lady cook the food? Yeah. I said, did you go back for seconds? Yeah. Did you feel, could you cook the food? No. I said, well, you mean to tell me you didn't feel like she usurped authority over you because you ate her food, you know, because you couldn't cook it? He said, well, well, no. I said, well, if she can feed you physically, she can feed you spiritually. You see what I'm saying? And I, I think, I, I, and I can see what's happening here. I see strong women coming to the forefront of, of what's happening here, as well as men. And it's time for us to stand up and just believe, and no matter what we got to go through, just go through. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It didn't say, though I stop Billa House and canonize the place. We know how to get rid of the cartels. You kill them. Am I shocking you? They're killing everybody else. I tell you, all you got to do, this can happen. And what my El Chapo, whatever his name, he's got $14 billion and in prison. What do you let him keep this money for? Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. See, the Bible said the violent take it by force. Now, I'm not talking about just going out and kill people, but these people that are killing children and people with fentanyl and everything. Uh, uh, how many more has got to die before somebody stands up and do something? I mean, how many people got to be killed at an intersection before they put a red light? Are oh, you hearing what I'm saying? This gospel must be preached. So I'm going to tell you something, Gene. You're going to preach this through Flashpoint? I mean, it's going to all of us. We don't have time to, uh, to just sit down. No, there's too much to be done. And I really agree with this last generation. And I believe Flashpoint was called and sent of God. Yes, it is uh, it, it, it's churchy, but it also is political in some areas. And it should be because they should mix that. Why? Because why not? That's how you change people. You teach morality. You teach honesty and integrity. Today, lying is very, very popular. In my day, you, you get your mouth washed out. Remember those days? We didn't have spankings. We had whoopings. <laughs> Remember them switches? Oh, Lord. You could hear them coming before they hit you. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? Yes, sir. You better know it. But you know what? Raised a generation of men and women that knew how to work. That's right. That could produce a good family. Go to, wrong, go to uh, Matthew 24, 14, and remember it, that this gospel must be preached, and the end shall come. So if you have a chance to let your light shine, I don't care if you're in P.F. Chang's or walking in the mall, just smile big enough. People are coming, what are you smiling about? Jesus. Oh, you're religious. No, I, religious people don't look like me. I'm born it's again. It's and it's time for all us to stand up and be Americans. Yeah. Amen. Because this nation was founded by God Almighty. Did they have problems back then? Well, sure they did. That's not the issue. But look where, look where it's, they're trying to destroy it. So when you hear all these super liberal people like that guy from Vermont who says, I heard him say myself, that no senator should be a millionaire? 
what, oh, oh, well, what's his name, Bernie, whatever his name is. I want to call him Bernie Madoff, but that's the wrong Bernie. <laughs> but uh, you know what I'm saying? Oh, but he sold that book. He ain't giving that money away, is it? No, he's not. No. And neither is the Chinese communists, too. They found out that money works. They just control the people, see? But if we'll stand and believe what God says we can do and preach this gospel, this good news, that this can all change, you know how I know that? No one could save me. Kathy tried. It didn't work. Mama tried. It didn't work. It didn't work. I was raised on the streets of New Orleans with La Cosa Nostra. I'm Sicilian. You do what you got to do. And that's right. Alligator got to eat. You think I'm kidding you? That's the way it was. But it took a message from a man called Billy Graham. Come on. And watch this. Kind of hard to call him Reverend Graham. You call him Billy. It's hard to call Jesus Reverend Christ. You call him Jesus. But that simple word, this gospel, changed a boy that would kill you as soon as look at you. Oh, it's impossible. Well, if you ask Kathy, you'd find out t before I was born again because I thought it was normal. Well, it was normal in my, in my neighborhood. But when you understood, when God changed me, never thinking I'd ever preach, never heard of a prophet. Prophet, I thought of prophet in terms of money, not a person. You know, I wouldn't raise that. We, we didn't read the Bible. We let the priest tell us what we should know, I guess. I'm telling you, get this gospel out. Help Flashpoint be that center, that, that beginning of the end. In every way, shape, or form, talk about it. Tell people to watch it. You, you don't have to tell them to give to it. Just tell them to watch it. And, let, and watch it with your heart, not with intellectual activity or range in research or induction in reasoning. Forget about all that. You see, we need to, we need to get rid of all these professors. See, they all call them woke. They need to wake up. They need to wake up. Right. You see, and it can be done, not with religion. Religion will not do this, ladies and gentlemen. Relationship and fellowship with God Almighty will get this thing done. And then one day we'll say, up in the sky, it's a bird. No, it's a plane. Wait a minute, that's Jesus. <laughs> see, it's coming. So remember that. Remember that. Amen. You're going to see him. You don't want to see the wrath of God. Uh -uh. Like I said earlier, the only one that ever saw that was Noah. You just seen the persecution of the church. So we're going to get persecuted, but that's yeah. all right. That doesn't make any difference. Jesus was persecuted. Kill me, I'll be back in three days. And he was. And then, ladies and gentlemen, he's only been gone a weekend. A thousand years in one day with the Lord. That's right. He's just gone a weekend. Yeah, that's why he said, surely I'll come quickly. I tell you what, Jesus is so true and so real because he's not a religious figure. He didn't come to create Christianity. He came that you might know the father, a father and his family. And in that process, we got born again. So if you don't like the way you was born, try it again. <laughs> and let Christ come into your life and it'll change America and all you that have come across that border, if you're from Mexico, that's fine. Instead of jumping around the Mexican flag, adopt our ways. You want to be an American? Act like an American. If you've come from Brazil, that's great. I got no problem with that. My God, instead of just saying, I got to have a Brazilian section. No, no, be an American. Because an American, if you go to France, you can't become a Frenchman. But if a Frenchman comes to America, he can become an American. You know, if an Italian comes to America, he can become an Italian. If you go to Italy, you can't become an Italian, but you can here. See, it was built on Judeo-Christian principle. It was built on being born again, a new entity. You see what I'm saying? So speak good of your God, because he is, and speak good of your country. And if he's talked loud enough, they will hear us. They will. I know they will, because that's our job to do. Thank you. All right. For, as we begin to wrap up, I, I want... Pastor Gene, I, yeah. I, I feel there's a shift that yeah. I'm sensing in this atmosphere. Okay. And it I happened too. when the Lord was speaking and, and what uh, Jesse was sharing. And, and I feel it's this. 
There is a new song that is going to begin to be sung in the swing states. And you know what the song is going to be? Some of these swing states are going to start singing the blues. Because they're going to start seeing red and turning red. And, and they're going to start turning red in indignation because they can't believe that their, their state shifted towards conservatism. There is a real shift coming to the swing states. And I, and I tell you, this is going to happen. And, and this is very strategic. The scripture that I hear, and I looked it up in my Bible, is Daniel 9.21. It says, I, Daniel, while I was praying, the angel Gabriel was caused to fly swiftly. And I sensed angelic presence in here, even when Jesse was speaking. And I walked out on this stage tonight, and this church has got words of life that are in this atmosphere that have been pioneering many, many things for years for the United States of America. And I believe that we would grieve the Holy Spirit and not use wisdom if we don't, in this spirit of agreement, and those of you that are watching, take the words that are here, take the things that we are facing, and with the angels that are here waiting for our words, we need to come into agreement. And I think we need to take a moment to pray and really release decrees, prayers that are going to shift this country towards where it needs to go and towards the way of uh, acceleration for God's justice. And I don't feel like I'm supposed to do that, but I... I Dutch, Dutch do you feel it? I, I just sense that... That's what we need to do. Go ahead, we have a moment to pray, and then even those that need to get their hearts to the Lord, I think that would also be honorable. Stand up. Go ahead, Dutch. Just Father, stand. Let's stay. Father, you have been very clear tonight that you want us to do 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 4, 5. You said... Remember, your weapons are not fleshly, carnal, human. They are mighty through me. That's right. Filled with my power is what the word means. Filled with dunamis. They are infused with dunamis, these weapons. And you said with them, Lord, we can tear down, demolish strongholds. And everything that can be built in the mind of a person or a culture that shuts me out. You said we have weapons powerful enough to demolish that. And so we pray into that right now, Lord. We release your power from this place and from around the nation and nations, those agreeing with us now. We release your power, the name of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb, the sword of the Spirit. Through the power of agreement, yes. we decree that there is a force yes. now hovering over America, yes. invading the atmosphere of America that is demolishing these thought patterns and lies and what has taken decades for the enemy to build through uh, uh, deception and deceit and the education and the programming. You are going to dismantle that yes. stronghold. Yes. We tear it down yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes, we say mindset of humanism, mindset of evil that would traffic children, that would cause to divide us and, and create racism and uh, traffic in children and these demonic mindsets and lusts for power. We demolish you. We tear them down in the name of Jesus. We say... That the name of Jesus is against you. The power of the cross is against you. It is finished. It is accomplished. And we speak his name. And Lord, now we appeal to you just as our founders did. We appeal based on the blood of the lamb sprinkled on the mercy seat of heaven. We ask you for mercy over this land. We ask you for mercy over those bound. We ask you for mercy for those that have been sold lies and now believe them. We say your power can demolish it in a moment. You can do it. Yes, we will teach them truth and renew their minds. We will do that. But you will come with a spirit of repentance. Repentance meaning a new understanding, a new way of thinking. You are coming with an unveiling, not just of the one, but of a nation. 
spirit of enlightenment, spirit of revelation. You are coming to unveil, to lift the veil. You are coming with a great revival that will save us and we will preach this Jesus. So Lord, we agree now here and around this nation and the nations and we say, yes, America shall be saved. And the strongholds are coming down and the gospel will prevail. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give him praise. Yeah. Give him praise. Come on, that's not enough. Pick it up. Lance, did you have something else? I felt like you were wanting to share something earlier, and I didn't get to you. Yeah, the, you know, the verse that balances out and makes sense out of, when you hear prophecy like Hank is saying tonight, my heart goes back to, I remember when uh, Donald Trump ran in 2016. It's just a few of us were talking about this idea that God was about to intervene in American affairs through a God that they weren't expecting him to use. And the Lord gave me a word before the, uh, that's just a sober word. It was Chuck Pierce gave it, and most people don't even realize how accurate a prophet he, he can be. He said that unless there is a shift in America by midterms, within four years, you'll see the undoing of everything Donald Trump has done. It was an unusual prophecy, and I actually called to get a clarification. I said, did you actually say what I think you said in one short sentence? That if there wasn't a shift in America, that the midterms results, this was going to be in like 2018, would be such that within four years, which put us in 2020, everything that was accomplished will be undone. Well, he prophesied it would all be undone. And I just watched when Biden came in, everything was undone. And the word the Lord gave me in 2016 about us is God will give us deliverance. God will give us the strategies. But we have to actually meet God in our agency. And not expect it because it's been said, preached, prophesied, or proposition that it's going to manifest. And here's what I got in 2016. The Lord said, this will be the challenge for your generation. Elisha became sick with the illness with which he would die, and King Joash of Israel came to him and wept over his face and said, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen. He knew, it. He knew the anointing of the double portion. The prophet of God was about to leave. And Elisha said to him, I know what you need. You need something from me. Take a bow and some arrows. So he took himself a bow and some arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, Put your hand on the bow. So he put his hands on it. Elijah put his hands on the king's hands. Now you've got the anointing and you've got human agency. You've got the obedience of a person in an office of a king, and you have the prophetic resting on it with all the potential of changing the situation. And he said, now open the east window. And he opened it, and then Elijah said, shoot. And he shot. And he said, that's the arrow of the Lord's deliverance, the arrow of deliverance from Syria. You must strike the Syrians at Aphek. Till you've destroyed them. You cannot go halfway. You have to go all the way for this victory. That's right. You can't go in part. You can't think, well, I just want to get by this one time. I just want to get past this. And he took the arrows. And he said, take the arrows. And he took them. Then the prophet said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. So he struck, boom, 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 three times. And the man of God was angry. And he said, you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck Syria till you destroyed it. Here's my burden. We have got to get to an, a, a dimension of unity in the body of Christ where we pierce through this kind of discord and fragmentation of exertion and come to that critical point of critical mass where we smite the arrows five or six. There is still a warfare over the unity of the body of Christ. What we're doing should not be that novel. The fact that, and then even when I, I hear Gene saying, do you, it's almost like a pleading, do you see the value in this? 
it ought to be obvious. This thing isn't sewed up. And so I feel all the time, and when I'm around the prophets, I try to be optimistic, but I'm Jewish enough to be pessimistic. And here's what I, I remind myself of Patton's great line in that movie, when they're at Bastogne, and he reminds Eisenhower, he says, we could still lose this. There's victory in the atmosphere, but it's not a done deal. That's right. I'm telling you, there's a victory over America, but it's not sealed. There have been too many authoritative, divisive voices, even speaking to the body of Christ, causing us to question whether or not the United States is actually the inheritance of Jesus. You have no idea how goofy some apostolic and prophetic networks are that are questioning whether the United States is even a nation that was given to Jesus and founded by God for a unique purpose of God, causing a doubt. Even for guys like me when I'm in front of them, wondering, is, is Jesus the Lord of nations or isn't he? Are nations to be given to him as his inheritance or aren't they? And part of our problem is we have such a focus on rapturitis, we're so anxious to get out, we're out of here, that we don't realize you're not out till the job's done. You're not out till the job's done. So I was in Israel speaking to like a hundred nations. Go to the Feast of Tabernacles. I'm down there. I'm part Jew. So I'm down there talking to my people. Got a meeting with Knesset. Have a hundred different nations there. And when I was there, Jesse was there. I had to go to Israel to get hope for America. Because here's what the Lord said to me. He said he wants to give us four more years, but it will be troubled times because the left will freak out. You think now that they've got the power consolidated that they've got, they virtually threaded their way through every institution, academic, corporate, political, media, arts, entertainment. There's not a single mountain that they do not occupy right now. And we're, we're like the hobbits out here trying to take the ring to mortar and, get, and, and break the system. Understand, we are not in a position of power. But that's okay. God likes to take, shall we say, the weak things to confound the mighty. We're going to have to actually move with a, lot, with a whole different degree of bang on that ground, five or six. We have to have a greater unity, a greater intentionality. 3,143 counties in America, 30 are going to determine the future of this country. You ought to know what those 30 are, and we ought to have intercessors. We ought to have evangelists. We should be pounding those 30 counties day and night because victory is possible, and it's not a done deal. When I was in Israel, the Lord told me this. I'll give you four more years. I had to get it from, I got it, got it in Israel. The Lord said, for the sake of the nations. Because America is still the one restraining force in the global world of anarchy and agendas. We hold China from its agenda. We hold Islam still in check as long as Trump's been around. He put a check on that spirit. You haven't heard about terrorism and ISIS. You haven't been afraid of what a radical Muslim might do. You haven't had that fear because he was so hit back when, when Donald Trump, like a modern-day Cyrus, undid the ability of his adversaries to hurt us. The Lord said he'd give us four more years. The issue is still hanging in the balance. He'll give us, it's his will to give it to us. But he so told me, you better run through those nations when I give it to you, because I'm going to restrain lawlessness globally for the sake of one great mighty revival and one great harvest. You better run furiously. So I'm telling you, I believe God wants to give us four years. I think Trump, they want to lock him up. You ought to be praying for him. We are so insensitive and disconnected from what that man is going through. He got hurt in New York. They're, they hit him with $250 million as a baseline. He could go up to $600 million. They're gutting him financially. They're destroying Eric and Donnie's future business enterprises. Family business for the whole family is being torn down. They'd love to tear down the brand and the buildings of Trump. They're sending a message to anyone else that dares to enter into the boys club in Washington. You better not send someone in here again. We'll raise up our own. Well, Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that the body of Christ is here at this moment in history. That's right. That we are here to move in a unique unity that will hit the arrows on the ground five, six, seven times. We're not asking for a temporary relief or a momentary deliverance. We're praying for a divine shift in the atmosphere. I pray that now a greater unity will come into the body of Christ in the area of civic engagement than ever before. And those voices that would intimidate and embarrass us with Christian nationalism and dominionism shall be crushed and made silent. I pray, Lord, that in all those 20 or 30 counties that are decisive in America, that you're going to raise up your ecclesia. You will build your church. 
and you will build a mighty apostolic end time harvest machine that will go through the earth. I pray and thank you, Father, that you're revealing these things to your servants right now that we might be in agreement with you for their manifestation. And everyone said? Amen. 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 All right, so, so here's how we're going to wrap up tonight. You, you've gotten a lot of word tonight. Who would have ever thought a few years ago you'd hear border, Biden, and Bible all in the same night? <laughs> well, listen, many of you have been sitting out here and sitting up there, and you've been listening to the words that have been speaking and it's been spoken. And those of you on television, you've been listening. This is a time to get things right. We don't have time to sit around. We don't have time to wait for the water to be just perfect to get in. If you need, the altar is open. If you need to get some things right, yes, Tony's going to pray for you. If, you're, if you want to get saved, we want this is the time to get in. The water is stirring. But if you need to get some things settled, and I'm talking about believers now, you realize, hey, I've been, I've been hanging back. I haven't been doing what I need to be doing. I've been kind of, I haven't been... I haven't been uh, lukewarm, but I haven't been hot. This is the time to come down. So I want to open the altars. We're going to give you to come, to come down here. Make, I dare you to make a public statement in front of all these people that you're ready to get some things changed in your life. We're going to see this change in your life, your city. We're going to see it change. Those of you here in Minneapolis and Minnesota, we're going to see Minnesota for Christ. I'm not willing to give up Minnesota. I'm not willing. So if that's you, come now. Come now. We'll wait for you. We'll wait for you. You need to come on down. You need to get some things straight, then let's do it right now in Jesus' name. Thank you for coming. Come on. Thank you for coming. That's it. Come. You guys, have you were chatting? You had something to share? You're talking about dinner later? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, this isn't it. Now, no, I didn't stretch out the altar call because, listen, I don't have time to play. Well, we don't have time to play, ladies and gentlemen. This is it. This is time. You know you're sitting there. Those of you up, to, up top, well, we will make time. There's time for you to get down here. I dare you to come down here and make a public declaration that you're going to step up. You're going to step up. You're going to step up. And I don't care if you're a pastor or a ministry leader. Mom, dad, they'll wait for you. Come on down. These people down here right now are making a statement. They're saying, I will stand up for what's right. I will stand up for what biblical values and what Jesus said. I will stand beside Jesus who went to the cross for me. I will not hide in a cave. But I'll come out and say, this is who I am. This is the God I serve. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed. I don't care what you believe. I know what I believe. And I'm going to stand strong. If that's you, come on down now. Sorry, I feel like I'm scolding you. But I'm telling you how important this time is right here, right now. Don't make the mistake of going and leaving here this weekend without getting this right. All right, Tony, take it from here, and we're going we're gonna to... Let the people go in just a few minutes. I want to invite some to come on behalf of their children, on behalf of their family. If there will be a mom or a father that would stand in the gap, I believe that God would do a miracle in your home by the time you get home. Is there a mom or a dad or a grandparent that would come and stand in the gap? We'll wait for you. There's some that have already come from the balcony. Let others come. And as they're coming, in the spirit of an evangelist, I've been studying and what, for whatever reason, this year, World War II, I've just been dr drawn to it more than before. And I, I just recently watched that docuseries from several years ago about the Band of Brothers. And there was, there was there's a particular battle where it seemed like defeat was coming to the American army. And there was just, there was, they had been under heavy warfare and they're just, they were down and they had lost so many soldiers. But there was, there was this, there were these soldiers that it's like their assignment was encouragement and they would go from battlefield to battlefield and just rem remind the soldiers hey we're winning the war 
They didn't have Facebook. They didn't have social media to check to see how things were going. And so there was these soldiers. They would just, all their job was to go from battlefield to battlefield and let, the, and let the soldiers know we're winning the war. I've been in seven churches in 13 days from east coast to west coast. I want you to know something. We're winning the war, ladies and gentlemen. Souls are coming to the feet of Jesus. People are being saved. People are being baptized in the Holy Ghost. Don't believe what the naysayers are saying. We're winning the war. There's light in the evening time. Revival isn't coming. Revival is here. Hallelujah. There's more that are coming. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Yes, sir. As, as they're coming, I just want to talk to the people who are watching. There's a phone number on the screen. They're licensed prayer ministers that will pray with you. Whatever you need, they are there. And we're going to go off here in a few minutes off the television network. But I want you those, if those of you that can stay for just a few extra minutes, I've got some things I want to talk to you about that I don't want on television. So please stay if you can. And uh, call that number. Thank you. Make sure you're with us tomorrow night. Tony, continue. Amen. Whether you're praying for yourself or for a loved one, you can pray my prayer or pray the words that you feel to pray to the Lord. But I do feel like repentance is important for all of us. It's not a one-time affair. This is a daily exercise of the believer. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I repent of my wrongdoings, even my anger and my frustration. Forgive me. Wash me. We declare Jesus Christ is the Lord of our lives and the Savior of our souls. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me, for saving my house, and for saving this nation. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, would you give him praise all over this house right now? Now, before, before I give it back to Brother Gene, I take authority over sin, sickness, and disease. I take authority over the addictions and the spirits that have attacked your children. And by the authority of the Word of God, by the power that's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command you to be healed, be delivered, and be set free right now by the power of God. I say healing has come to your home. Healing has come to your children. And we decree and we declare today that revival has come to our nation again by the Spirit of the living God. And I heard the Lord say, I assigned angels as border patrol of the Garden of Eden. I put a flaming sword around the Garden of Eden. Tonight we release and dispatch an angelic host to the southern border of the United States and, yea, the northern border of the United States. And what has not been done by the legislation of man, we legislate it by the flaming fire word of God. And we say there will be an angelic border patrol. We say terrorists will not enter our nations. They will be intercepted by the angels of the Lord. We decree and declare tonight that our borders are protected by the word of the living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we just give him praise, right, for just a couple of minutes? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your Riley, where are you? There's Riley waving his Bible right there. We have some things we want to give you. If you've rededicated your life, that's great. If you've given your, lot, your heart to Jesus for the first time, follow him. we got some things we want to give to you. Those of you on television, go ahead. You can follow Riley on his way out. Uh, those of you on television, uh, there's... We want to get some, some stuff into your life. We want to plant some, some materials in your life. Just call the number if you've made that decree and that prayer. Have you enjoyed tonight? Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you. And I believe that everyone that came forward that, that you will see and you're going to experience a new power, a new commitment.
a new level in your life that you haven't seen before. And what you're going to see tomorrow and tomorrow night is going to amplify what you heard tonight. So would you, as we go off television, we're going to go off TV right now, guys, in the back. So would you give God a big glory, hallelujah, and we'll see you tomorrow night.